Yeah, baby. Wonder if all my bad decisions get accounted in the algorithm. No statistician could dissuade me from my bigger vision. I know my occupation's quite an unlikely place in this world to occupy and talk about upon a daily basis. Our information is predetermined by some biased business. We all in sermon to silicon that push up lovely neighbors. I'm done with paper chasing, think I'm on to bigger banquets. This that full circle, new wave, energy on a Tuesday. Turn a blue day to a bright hue, yellow with a smooth A in hair, extra fruité, the brain. You can't move me, the music is man It's a con job, but this grand I'm blessed with a great hand amongst many that stink Yeah, it took some hard work Blind love play a huge role And they say that it don't But they're feeding you fool's gold If I know one thing, the truth's home Even if it's a tough thing to swallow An even harder thing to hold And truly know without a doubt while on the globe Even though that seems inherent It ain't always so apparent Dangle carrot, you ain't always gonna get it But don't worry, it's a pretty February In a year with more to carry And more days is yet to call Under the sun taking the ferry to the city Where the moment's extra pretty Like the people, like the idea that I keep inside my brain That isn't equal to the real world all that stress ain't saving me, fear though. I swear to God, I'm trying. But they pushing the demons down my esophagus. Screaming the easy life, what I want always. Praise made up holidays. Tell me that love is the answer just to boost this economy. But I'm more sell now, but I ain't following. I ain't a hollow man. I'm full of them fall winds. Take it all with a tall crane. And if you feel it, do it with me and just sing with the song say it all for what it is what it is what it is what it is it ain't all so big so big so big take it all for what it is it ain't all so big you see I think the snozzberry's gonna taste like snozzberries. It can be pretty weird if they taste it any other way. They just another day amongst many. Wouldn't want to spend it any other way. Except with friendly people bumping bends and box with a cup full of henny, selling smiles by the lot. There's some wholesale hosts, and that's the only thing I got. Well, except for drug addled downer, always drowning in the pot. But let's skip the minor details and get to moving through the plot. There's a potluck party popping off kind of song. This you go and tell your moms to play a junior prom. It's a rolly backpack anthem, like, damn, opera was hard. This for my real ones, eating Kit Kats, whole bar. This for my best friends, who all falling in love. Hope your heart's ready for the best yet to come. This for my couch surfing kings. Yo, baby, what's up? I wrote you a song. You better throw this thing on. Take it off for what it is. It ain't all so big. So big, so big, so big, so big. It ain't all so bad. I can't say. No, I always gotta go. Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul. On the road, I can't. No, I always gotta go Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul On the road I can't sit still for a minute I'm so dead set on indifference. Keep it Charlie, stay down with them dickens. Let's get around like it's the 80s. Right round, let's keep spinning. Let's keep playing these games that we don't want to finish. And I'm sorry if that sounds a bit bitter. But I am to the core. You want the whole damn thing? Then you ask him for more. You want that old jive swing? You take up all of the floor. I'm fine with standing at the edge of the door. You be the life of the party. I blend in with the core. You drink it all to Bacardi. Let's take it back for this started. You want the love? I don't got it. You scream and stay. Baby, please don't go. Don't think it's in me to listen to foe. 
It's so different with distance we roam into zones where nothing get hurt anymore. I just wish I was home when I step through front door. But instead, I'm alone and completely unsure. And even though you're screaming out with the best of intentions, I don't get it. Why do you always gotta ask me to stay? Why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. Say, why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. See, I've been lost in my thoughts, and my thoughts ain't too scared. Ush you off. Sorry, Mom. I just thought you were my world. Now you're not. And I'm just sitting, smoking, sloping in the days Cause my days ain't been the same since I drove here the I remember the way you wrote letters in blue ink You and me was in love Think about what your crew think I know your mom Hello, hello, hello This is Unsolicited that. with Security Boss How is everyone doing tonight? Hey, y'all <laughs> I sound like a country bucket dog let me, let me fix that. Hello, everyone. I'm glad that you're here. And we're going to have fun tonight with Security Boss. <laughs> Listen, um, I'm going to say hello to you guys. Listen, make sure you all are hitting the thumbs up when you come in. Make sure you have that um, notification bell on so when these videos come out, you can be the first to see them. And um, I just thank you all. Corey, you know my... Fam fave, you still on vacation. Black man, I am so glad you're here. Brittany B, girl, I'm proud of you. <laughs> Listen, we, I got to talk to you. I got to hear more. Red Lipstick Vibes, hello you. Mr. Steele, thank you for coming. Triple C, thank you. Uh <laughs> Y'all starting already. Spouse is now obese. Oh my goodness. Listen, you got the title, The Deal Breakers Within the Marriage. Okay, but listen, we're just going to, before we even get into that, I'm definitely going to open the chat up a little later. We're going to drop the link down and you all get to come and tell me what some of your deal breakers are. But if y'all been listening to Security Boss for any length of time, y'all know. There's no deal breakers. Marriage is forever. <laughs> I just thought I'd give y'all a moment to complain. <laughs> How about that? This is going to be the complaining slash solution night. How about that? And then guess what? Once you get it all out, we ain't got to talk about it no more because we in it for life. <laughs> but listen, thank you. Triple C, listen. Love you too. You got to come up. I got to hear more about uh, spouses now obese. <laughs> I don't know, but good. I'm glad that you're here. That is funny, Corey. <laughs> but I hope everybody is having a good week so far. So far. So far. And um, I know everybody probably hate going back to work yesterday, but we got to get this new year started. And um. Did any of y'all make any of those New Year resolution things? Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? You know, where you say you're going to do certain things for a certain purpose, <laughs> for a certain at the time, looking for something. Did y'all do all that? Whew, I haven't gotten around to it yet, but I, I, I keep saying that I am. But I guess it won't be a New Year's resolution anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Red lipstick vibes. Thank goodness. I work from home. I mean, you said it. That's the best. That is the best. It is. But listen, guys, when you come in, make sure you're hitting the thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you're hitting that button uh, for these videos. We need to get the engagement up. I appreciate all of you for being here. Now, I made an announcement. I think it was New Year's Eve. This channel actually became monetized. So I thank you all for doing that because it was because of you all that I am monetized now. So again, thank you. So, hey, Miss Celine, you're new to the channel. Thank you for coming. I hope you hit that thumbs up and subscribe. 
Um, Mr. Awesome, Sherelle, hello, hello, hello. Definitely. Um, <laughs> lack of money. I hear you. Also, I hope all of you took the poll and we're going to give out the, um, you know, what won in the poll, you know. But if y'all know, this is Security Boss and I don't believe in deal breakers. It just makes the relationship stronger. That's all it's about. So, Mr. Awesome, what you got? What was your comment? Hold on one moment. Let me pull it back up. Nope, my goals were to set when I gain clarity and they are adjusted as I glean more wisdom from people I want to be in similar positions as. That's perfect. That is perfect. I like those words. Definitely. Thank you, Sherelle. It was a, it was good coming into the new year. Monetize. You know what? We ain't got no one way up. That's where we're going. Oh, black man, I'm loving your comments. I'm Grogu. Wait a minute. I Celine, you are Grogu is my real name. <laughs> you tried to pull the wool over our eyes. <laughs> black man, you look amazing. You are truly the standard that the ratchet needs to take notes from. Thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. So listen, we're going to get into it, y'all. The title, Deal Breakers Within Marriage. Y'all already know. I'm going to tell y'all my story. I'm going to be the guinea. I'm going to let y'all uh, hear how it was 26 years ago with me, the 25-year-old me, 25-year-old security boss. Y'all would have never, you wouldn't even recognize her. <laughs> well, no, let me take that back. I looked the same, but the mind was not the same. So let's go back 25 years. Actually, is it 25? 26 years. I was 25 years old. So when me and my husband got together, y'all have heard this story before, how our, my family didn't care anything for my husband for no reason. They were just against him. I was the baby girl. I didn't need to be married. Men don't do this. Men don't do that. All right. So the voice in my head was not one that was positive. So I had to close my ears. Right. So when my husband and I, we were communicators, we talked all the time. I even said this before. We kind of. We put a whole year into 90 days. You know, we used to talk 24 hours a day, fall asleep on the phone, wake up, call each other again, all of that. So communication was not a a problem for us. So when we decided to get married, we sat down and we had our deal breakers, you know, things we said, if you do this, if you do that, we're done. <laughs> it was a joke, y'all, but it wasn't a joke. Back then, I was serious and I'm sure he was too. One deal breaker that we had, and this is not going to be new to ladies because we probably all say the same thing. Be Rodney, how are you? Good to see you. Thank you. So listen, number one deal breaker was cheating. Oh, just right music. Thank you. Thank you for your super chat. Thank you so much. Number one thing, cheating. Y'all know it was. That's all it is for a woman. We want these men to be faithful, committed, and loyal to us. That's what we want so we can be in love and submissive. <laughs> now, I know that's not always the case, but that's what we want. And that was our, our number one, okay, cheating. My number one cheating and my husband's number one cheating. Number two, I think I've mentioned this too, but our number two is we promised not to ever bring any third parties into our relationship. No third parties. That means uh, no family, no best friends, no fraternity brothers, no sorority sisters, no aunts, uncles, nobody. That was number two. And I must say, we have held on to those deal breakers for 26 years. Now, y'all going to ask, do the deal breakers mean anything now? Absolutely not. Because along the way, 
you realize that no one's perfect and you're one with this person and it's only going to get better. So the deal breakers are out the window and the marriage is 26 years strong. So that's what I think about deal breakers. (laughs) It's not real for me anymore, but I do know. And I thought about this all night and all day, actually, while we say things like this, while we have deal breakers. And I realized that deal breakers are created from former or previous relationships. I was my husband's second wife. So whatever she did or didn't do, I could not do. (laughs) So that was a deal breaker for him. So y'all already know cheating. (laughs) So he went going back down that road. He already saw it. He knew what it looked like and he didn't want it. Okay. For me, I was new at being married and I I just kind of, I just wanted somebody that was into me. So I just went along with it, whatever it was, the no third parties. That was those family members. I knew I had to put something in place because I couldn't hear the noise. I couldn't hear my mom, my elders telling me this is no good for you. How was I going to be good at it? So I had to pull away. So just keep that in mind. That's where it comes from. And it all got really real to me early on. You know, even though we put these deal breakers in place before marriage, When I got up there saying them vows and realized I was entering into a covenant, a commitment that was supposed to be forever with this man in front of God, (laughs) it no longer mattered. My my covenant and my promise all became um, not about me, not about him, about a higher power. So I couldn't mess up. I felt obligated. I felt obligated to do the right things. I felt obligated to stay engaged. I felt obligated to try. And I think that's what we're missing. You know, I hear all the time people talking about marriage and and divorce in the same sentence. Doesn't make sense. When you go to make those covenants, those commitments, and you're saying those vows, who are you saying them to? Who is the promise being made to? What are you committing to? Right? So I I often think about this. I got a comment here, though. Mr. Awesome, how many wives would you think, do you think, not leave their husbands if he was upfront about wanting emotionalists sex with other women infrequently. How many wives would I think wouldn't leave their husbands? Hmm. Let me tell you something. If my husband came to me with something like that, I would explore that. When I say explore that, I wouldn't explore the extra partners. I would try to find out, husband, what are you missing? What is it that you want? What's going on with you? What are you lacking? What are you, what are your principles right now? What are you standing on? Why are you having these desires? Let's talk about it. And if he can honestly tell me, you know, what's going on with him, because remember when I married him, he wasn't that way. So something changed within that man. And I would want to have lots of communication to what changed. And I would actually say, how can we fix this short of bringing in a third party into our relationship? Because that doesn't bring you closer together. That tears you apart. That's actually defiling your marriage bed. And anything you do against the marriage is just that, against the marriage. Remember, you're trying to bring it closer together, not tear it apart, because it's for life. So I appreciate Mr. Awesome. I hope I answered that question also. (laughs) I appreciate that though. 
But um, getting back to it. Oh, I got another comment. Cheating is very big deal for men. We are super possessive, but I think it's harder for a woman to cheat. Hmm. No, sir. No. Let me tell you something, y'all. If your foundation is not strong and it has a crack and you stop paying attention and you stop acknowledging that woman and she's feeling less than herself, she's not looking the way she wants to look or whatever, she'll dip out. She'll find someone that pays attention. I promise you. She may not want to do it, but women are very, can be very vulnerable. And when they are, they do things they, they wouldn't normally do. So I get what you're saying, but women do cheat. So I hope I answered your question. <laughs> Napoleon, money is the business factor because it can cover up a lot of things and also improve everyone's circumstances. It's money is a big, biggest factor as a deal breaker. Well, see, listen, Napoleon, I happen to think um, trials in a relationship is what makes a relationship stronger. So for me, you got your highs and your lows. Having lots of money is good, but being broke makes you better because you can always get high again. If you low, you ain't got number one way to go. So I say do it with your spouse. Why break up when you low? That's a ridiculous time to break up. That's time to come closer together and work harder and build again. Because see, listen, y'all, I always say money is easy. When you're operating in certain principles and you're doing the right thing, you will have money. You will. And if y'all going to question that, I like to hear you question it. And I said doing the right things. That's not a man laying on a couch. That's not a woman uh, hanging out with her girlfriends. I'm saying within marriage, man, you on your purpose leading. Woman, you being the wife submitting, you will be blessed. I promise you will. So for me, money is not the issue or not. Let me say it like this. You may have times where you broke. But it's okay. You're going to come through it. It's just another test to get to a better place. Sometimes we even say, um, we're in between blessings. How about that? <laughs> so I still say there are no deal breakers. I used to, um, there was a wise man, that's a pastor. He used to say all the time that the only reason why marriages break up is because one, uh, the other is selfish. I don't care what the other has done. One or the other is selfish. Even to the point of, I don't want to deal with this anymore. I'm walking away. That's a selfish move. I actually think that that's time to pour in. But I know it's not easy. Believe me, y'all. I know it's not easy. I have a, I have a friend, and I'm going to give this example, and this blows my mind. She dated this young man, very nice man, worked hard, did everything right. But guess what happened? About four weeks after they got married, he went on his first crack binge. She didn't even know he got high. She didn't know. They didn't live together. First crack binge. Four weeks after they got married. Blew all of our minds. OK. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I don't know, y'all. It wasn't something that God gave to me, but it gave it to her and she walked it out. But I must say, in them first four weeks, she tried to get that married and old. She did because. Uh, boy, that was some false pretense. But uh, I must say, oh, my God, it's probably been 20 years now. They're still together. He worked it out. He got help. She poured into him. She loved that man. And guess what? That wasn't the, that was the first crack binge. It wouldn't have last. It went on for some years. Here and there. Help here and there. And she finally, he was finally strong enough to 
to work it out. Like I said, 20 years now, they're still together and happy. Thank you, Van. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So again, I say, y'all, there are no deal breakers. It's just things that make us stronger. And I know some of y'all don't want to hear that because y'all want to run away. But that is the time when you need to grind harder. Now, understand this. And like I said to you, this happened to me when I was actually saying my vows. It finally got real for me. Your relationship with your husband will be the most women. It all depends on your beliefs. All depends on your beliefs. But your relationship with your spouse will be your most important relationship in your life. Your life. Think of it as my life depends on this. If I do it, my life depends on it. Before the billions, thank you for your super chat. Thank you. So if you think of it like that and you take it that serious you can't leave listen y'all i was um looking at a live today sherelle thank you thank you guys so listen i was looking at a live today and um it was colette over the top and colette said to me uh afterwards that she gave someone gave a sports analogy about uh men being i'm gonna say i'm gonna use it this way men being in marriage if a man, and I know most men are sports fanatics and they all have their special athlete that they follow, that they just love, that they just know everything about. Right now, I can say, Michael Jordan, y'all tell me what was his highest score and when and where or what team and what year did he make this high score? I bet most men in this chat right now could tell me exactly when that was exactly i'm gonna give y'all a minute if nothing else put the highest score in the chat all the men the highest score i even got this right as a female y'all put the highest score in the chat michael jordan put it in there <laughs> now if can't nobody tell me i'm gonna be like oh oh i'm gonna get to that black man but right now any of y'all know Michael Jordan's highest score? Oh, Corey said he can't. Okay. Also, oh, maybe we don't have any uh, sports fanatics in the chat. That's hard to believe. But I'll accept that. Most of the time, most men can tell you Michael Jordan's high score was 63. High score, 63. He paid for the Bulls. It was 19, what, 86? Okay. Most men love sports. What I'm asking is, if you can love an athlete that much that Michael Jordan ain't played in 20 plus years, you can follow him and love him and engage with what he did over 20 years ago. Actually, hey, 86, 34 years ago, over 34 you surely should be able to put that into your wife and be forever. Michael ain't paid in 36 years. How about that? Balagon said 69. It was actually 63 was his highest score. But you all have your favorites. What I'm saying to you is, Invest that kind of time into your marriage, that kind of thought process, that kind of attention into your marriage. And it will never end. Never. Because you will love that woman and she'll submit to you and you will have everything you need and want. It's real. I'm telling you, it's real. That's all you got to do. But I get that. There's a lot of messages out there that puts a lot of fear behind marriage, but it doesn't have to be like that. If you can engage in a sports, uh, what you call it, an athlete, you got to be engaged in the woman that you choose to be your wife. 36 years ago, everybody knows him. Everybody knows he's the greatest. 
Put the energy into your spouse. Put the energy into finding your spouse. Married couples, put the energy into staying together. And it doesn't have to end. Not at all. Another out of story I heard today. This is y'all, this is real. It's the most important relationship you will have. Being married, becoming one, it's deep. There are no deal breakers. There are a lot of things that will happen, but they're put there to make you better, to help you grow. Now, I know y'all going to say, no, security boss, unsolicited, no, no, too much. I can't take it. You know, I don't know. I say no. I say, what's on the other side? What's better? Now, wait a minute. Understand this. I'm not talking about assault or, or someone hurting you or beating you or anything of that nature. Y'all know that's a deal breaker. We're not talking about that. We're talking about people who want to be married that go through trials where people change, people grow up, people are immature. Things happen. Kids come about. We have illnesses, sicknesses, uh, lack of money, all those things that are that's just life. Those are the things I'm talking about. There was another example. Um, some of y'all might know him. His name is Corey. He's the husband of the blind man, the blind man, blind guy, his wife, their life. Okay. I don't know if y'all know their story or not, but um, I'm not going to tell the story. I'm just going to give you a quick overview. He actually went blind prior to them being married. He said today, he went to her and said, no, look. We can't get married, you know, go find someone else, you know, she said, no, I'm going to marry you. I'm going to be with you. And they did it. And 20, I think it's 27 years now that they've been together. I think they said been married 19. They're still together. That's what I'm talking about. You don't look for reasons to get out of your marriage. You look for reasons to stay in your marriage. Peter, how are you? Thank you for dropping by. You don't get out. We stay in, guys. You know, you want, I hear people all the time talking about what is the benefit of having a wife, a wife, excuse me, the benefit of having a wife. We need to go ask Corey for the, for the blind guy. He has somebody to take care of him, somebody with him, somebody to be his eyes, somebody just to be there when he needs her, my husband, same thing. Marriage is an asset. Your wife is an asset. You know, your husband is also an asset. It should not be taken lightly. You know, there are a, a lot of benefits for being married. Listen, um, I heard somebody say the other day, this is funny. And I, I'm telling you, I'm so crazy, but he asked a question to this young man. He said, when the last time you've been tested? Tested? I'm like, tested for what? Y'all know. Tested for these things out here in this world. Marriage is protection. I'm talking about a good marriage. It makes no sense to be married and you're still out in the world. It makes no sense for a single man to be in a marriage and still be single. It makes no sense for a woman to be a wife and not know how to be a wife. So this is stuff we have to grow up in, y'all. We can't just give up, have these deal breakers, you know. Everybody wants to be fit, fine, and what is it? Y'all know the three Fs. <laughs> we all want that. We fall off sometime. Help us get back on. Don't run away. I mean... There's so many things. The sports analogy was the best because I know for a fact men love sports and they hold on and they know all the numbers, the how many throws, how many catches, how many rebounds, how many assists. They know all of it. Put that energy into your marriage, into your wife and make it last forever. You know, it's going to be tough sometimes. Sometimes they lose. Michael said his feet hurt. You know, he didn't play his best all the time, but you still was a Michael Jordan fan. 
You can do that for your marriage. Women, be submissive to your husbands. Okay? He didn't make all the best decisions. Okay, okay. He, he lost the money. All right. It's time to get some more. Support him. If he's a good man, don't leave. If he makes a mistake, and sometimes they do, forgive him. But listen, if you got to get help, if you having problems, resentment, you know, you feeling like I want to go do it too or whatever it is, get some help. Don't pull away from the marriage. Pull towards. Go towards your husband, not away. Okay? So this is what I have to say on these deal breakers. They're not any. So listen, I am going to put the uh, link in the chat and I would love from uh, Thank you, Eugene, fit, feminine, and friendly. We got to be it. We got to show these smiles. We got to welcome you all. We got to make y'all feel like you are the leaders that you are. I agree with all of that, but we're not perfect. Sometimes we fall off. Sometimes we need encouragement. Sometimes we need that love from those alpha males. You know, we need it. It's an everyday thing. And, it, you know, I'm not saying be perfect, but be engaged. Raw and uncut. My wife and I just separated a few days ago. Go get her back. Go get her back. Have the conversations. You know, sometimes you might need to breathe. You know, you might need to breathe. But don't walk away. Separation, you need to breathe. Sit down. Analyze the situation. Find out. Check yourself. Check your temperature. Was I selfish? Did I do something that I shouldn't have done? Should I apologize? Analyze the situation. Don't walk away. Because I promise you, there's, there's nothing out there. You already hearing it. Lord knows you hear it. There's no more women. Women ain't no good no more. You know, go get her back. Take your time. Fix it. I don't know who you're, um, I don't know if you're a sports fanatic or who you're, who you follow in sports, but just as much as you learn them, learn your wife. Put the be intentional. Put the time in. Ask the questions. Don't walk away. Let it simmer down a bit, you know, because hot heads, you know, can't nobody hear nobody. But don't walk away. It's not a deal breaker. You both are still living. You both, I hope. You both still love each other. So just take your time. Mr. Awesome, I guess if Kim Kardashian ever did something right, it was not leaving Kanye when the world was against him and he was millions in debt. She left him after a successful album release. <laughs> guess what? And then he want her back. <laughs> you know what? Um, I can imagine that it's very, very hard with these celebrity marriages because there's really nothing holding them together. Rail Thomas, how are you? If it's not physical abuse, divorce should not be an option. I agree with you. I agree totally. Well, we got to get the rest of the world to hear that because we're not operating in intentional. We're operating in feelings. As soon as I'm not happy, I want to pack my bags. Or she didn't do what I wanted to do. I want to pack my bags. Or she's no longer fit, feminine. I can never find. <laughs> as soon as she's not that, I'm ready to go. I'm going to get me another one. Friendly. Eugene, I'm going to get this one day. I tell you. Oh, Napoleon, I love your analogy comparing sports to marriage on the guy's end. I, I know that was a good one, right? It makes sense. Put the same energy we do when it comes to supporting your sports icons in your personal life as well. How about that? It wasn't mine. I got it from someone else. But isn't it perfect? Because, you know, guys and girls, but I know more guys are into sports that way. And they know everything about the men that they like to follow. I mean, Michael Jordan, over 34 years ago, hadn't played any kind of basketball but guess what? They'll go buy his sneakers. They know his stats, his jerseys, whatever. They with it. 
raw and uncut. Is it time limit on when a person should move forward from the hurt? Okay, I don't quite understand that question. Is it time limit? On? I'm hope I'm thinking you're talking about within the marriage. If they're hurt within the marriage, listen. For me, um, I see hurt as a perfect time to be vulnerable. I see that as a time to come clean. I see that as a time to tell your spouse and show them who you really are, naked and uncut. I'm hurt. This is what this did to me. This is how I feel. This is why I'm this way. It's a perfect time. And then once you've put a voice to it, I think it's time to be healed. But if you hiding it behind ego, pride, selfishness, or trying to get back, being resentful, you can never get, you won't get the, um, the power or the submission that comes with letting go. See, hurt is when it's time to submit. Because you no longer know what to do. You should throw your hands up and let somebody else take the wheel. But so often we keep thinking that we're in control. Let's do this. Let's do that. She hurt me, you know, or he hurt me. And we continue with these events of trying to rectify the problem. And it only makes it worse. So I would say... The time that I'm hurt, we should use it to be vulnerable and to heal. So I hope that answered the question. Today's women are getting married for the showcase of wedding and for the look at me. Social media posts. You have to be 100% all, 100% all in for good, the bad, the ugly. You're exactly right. But you know what? I am, B. Rodney, I am... Um, I'm holding these men responsible for that. I don't know what today's uh, men are doing as far as finances go when we having these weddings. I don't know if the daddies are paying for this or if the husbands uh, to be are paying. I'm not sure. But whatever it is, I think the fiance or the husband, the spouse, I think he can control that a little bit better. I think he should lead that situation. It doesn't have to be that way. You know, so I'm not going to, necessarily put all that on the woman because I've happened to think the woman, the man actually may want to partake in that also because believe it or not, they be looking good. They do. You know, when they be on Instagram and they be dancing and everybody happy and the brides be twerking. Man, what would you all do if your bride twerked on your wedding night for everybody at the party? Y'all know? Y'all know? Would you think that maybe you made the wrong decision or would you embrace? <laughs> y'all better have these conversations, y'all. Don't let your woman twerk on you at the uh, the wedding night <laughs> before, you know, at the wedding party. The reception, that's right. That's what it's called. Triple C Solutions, thank you. Thank you so much. Don't let her. I've been seeing some, some things. It was one bride on there with a see-through dress. I don't think her groom knew. But she did it at the uh, reception. <laughs> Took off her shoes. Started twerking. <laughs> Everybody was there. It was a surprise. <laughs> Mr. Thomas, our parents and grandparents stayed married for 40 plus years. The generation quits because they don't want to put in the work. You're exactly right. I'm calling them out though. There are no deal breakers, no complaining. It's no need to do it because once you take those vows, you make that commitment and that covenant to, you promised, you didn't promise her, you promised God that you're going to do these things for her. Do it. Lead. Even if you even if she get mad at you because you put your foot down, lead anyway. She'll be all right. And I, you know what? I hate to say this. If she run away, let her go ahead and run away. It's only temporary. Put your foot down. I ain't saying act crazy. I'm not saying being less loving, but be a leader. 
It's on you all. It's on y'all. Y'all got to do it. There are some good women. They are. All the brides were twerking with her too. <laughs> Did you see it? <laughs> Mr. Awesome. You're right. Oh, it was something else. You know, they had to blur it out. It's, it's, I don't know how that husband felt. Maybe he know. Maybe he, I don't know, y'all. It's something else. But it's interesting. It's in, it was interesting. But, um, you know, if they have an understanding going in that this is okay, then let it be. But if you don't have principles or a foundation for your marriage, you're probably not going to make it. So it's, it's just not however it comes or we're going to figure it out when they get here. It can't be that way. It has to be more to it than that. So listen, y'all, the link is in the chat. I would appreciate it if someone, all these questions, and I love the engagement that you all are giving me. You all come up and we just have a conversation about it. Deal breakers within a marriage. I mean, do you all still think that we should have deal breakers in a marriage? I mean, that it's okay to leave? Y'all already know, Security Boss says no, no deal breakers. But there will be trials only to make you stronger though, y'all. It ain't going to kill you to have to breathe a little bit or have to stop buying something or going on vacation or something like that. I, I knew a woman one time, y'all, and I thought I would never see this, but they were homeless together. She didn't have to be. She had family, but she slept right outside with that man. And I thought that was outstanding. I thought that was outstanding that she did that. Thank you, Lakisa. Michelle, thank you very much. Um, but listen, the link is in the chat. I, I don't know why y'all um holding out on me tonight. Y'all doing excellent in the chat, but I'm having to read all this. I would love to have you all come up and just let's talk about it. But um I'm definitely loving the engagement though. And I think all you all understand me perfectly well. Definitely do. But there are no deal breakers. Make sure you're hitting that thumbs up button when you come in. Make sure you're subscribing to this channel. And um, I love the engagement. The link is in the chat. And anyone have any questions or want to continue, please do. Go ahead and hit that link button. Come on up. Listen, when you come over here, we got to cam up because we don't want any surprises. Any at all. <laughs> no, y'all know what I'm talking about. But just keep in mind, y'all. That um, well, Peter has a Peter investor has a comment here. Let's see. I believe that Devin Franklin should have seek oh marital counseling, especially he is a pastor. I agree with you. And you know what? I actually said to my husband that I felt at the moment that even though they he's filed, I didn't feel like it was over. You know, um, I don't know anything about it, and I just. Can't imagine, but I don't feel like it's over. That would be, that's terrible for it to be over like that. I can't imagine what it is, but he, he, he came across a deal breaker. And I'm assuming that it was something talked about prior to being married. That's the, you know, that's the thing. I think it had to be talked about prior to being married. But I hope that they work that out. I would love to see them stay together. But you know what? This brings me to something else. Um, oftentimes, I think this was before the billions and I were talking, and I noticed how people stay on Jada and Will, okay? And I hear about how they have an open marriage and this and that and all of that. I don't know. But I would say Jada and Will's marriage is somewhat successful. I know many might not agree because they go through a whole lot of ups and flows and trials or whatever, but they putting it out there on the red table talk, which is like probably not good for us to be all in their business. But y'all got to understand this, y'all. They're communicating about everything. They got some kind of understanding about everything and nobody's walking away. So for me, they're actually working it out, all parts of it. It's not perfect. But they got some sort of agreements. Now, I don't know. I have principles. If their agreements are working, then kudos to them. I don't 
no if agreements could take you to forever, but they're doing it. They're putting it out there, which is, you know, sometimes I wonder about that. Is this for money or is this real? But they're talking about it, y'all. They're communicating. Nobody's fleeing, no matter how hard the conversations are. I know sometimes Will don't look good. You know, he don't look like that alpha male, but he's still in there. He didn't walk away. He didn't run away. He just hearing those very hard truths that sometimes women have that um, they don't talk about. Hello, Thomas Gang. Hello, I think you got us upside down. There you go. Hello. You know what? You're good. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. I saw y'all beautiful pictures for the new year. I was at Christmas. Might have been, might have been, uh, might have been both. Yeah, yeah, might have been both. Yeah. I'm sorry. What's up, Jedi? Yeah, Jedi, how are you? Thank you for being here. So listen, you are a a new married couple. What y'all think about this? These deal breakers. I'm a little Um, I didn't hear you say that there are no deal breakers, right? Right. Um, right. I feel like. If you have deal breakers, I definitely feel like that's something you need to talk about before marriage. Put it out on, on the table, you know, because some people may disagree. Um, I kind of agree with my husband. He said that physical abuse would be a deal breaker. Cheating, you know, or or maybe cheating multiple times. You may forgive your spouse, so cheating would be a deal breaker. But whatever that is, it should definitely be discussed prior to uh, saying those vows. You are exactly right. Um, you know what? When you talk about abuse, it's not even you're not even married anymore. I just feel like that's just you know can't have it. But the cheating part, um, I'm talking about people who are engaged in being married. You know, uh, if there's a crack in our foundation, we need to fix it. If a woman is cheated on her husband or a man is cheated on his wife. There's a problem. There's something there that we're not fixing. We need to sit down and talk about it. We need to get, we need to have a lot of communication about it. And it's like you said, uh, a serial cheater, I guess. That's not a person that wants to be married. And you cannot be married to someone that doesn't want to be married. So you're exactly right. You know, you can't. But, you know, I pray that they work that out. But, you know, that's just, Sometimes you get in situations where you have single people in a marriage. They're not operating as a couple. You know, they're still single. That's what makes the difference. I can't hear you. Just like you said, you hear me now? Yeah. I feel like I feel like a lot of people feel like. Your marriage is gonna be your wedding day forever. And and what I mean by that is I feel like people feel like they're gonna have a perfect uh marriage and they're not gonna have to face any obstacles. So when they do face an obstacle, they go crazy. They're quick they're, they're quick to end the marriage. So I think people need to anticipate not being cheated on or having any kind of abuse, but to know it's gonna be some days where you're gonna love each other. There's going to be some days you can't stand each other, but it, it's, it's a part of life that you're going to have to learn how to get through the good and the bad. So I think right. it's a lot of people just, it's like, it's going to be a honeymoon, peaches and cream forever. And when they face an issue, they just want to give up. Right. I agree with you. But you know what? The one thing that I can say about that, and I hope not to offend anybody, but um, that's immaturity. Because in life, the older you get, the more life you live, the more things that are going to happen to you. You're going to go through something. So if you feel as though you're going to be on a cloud all your life, that's very immature thought. And if you're going to get married and you're going to say those vows, all you got to do is listen to him. He promised you that you're going to go through something. <laughs> you know, sickness that it have. You know, you're going you're gonna to go through something that's real. It could happen to you. But... You got to know that that woman that you chose or that man that you're with, 
is the one that you're supposed to be with to go through those things with. That's why you're there. And if you do that, you'll come out with favor. But it ain't always going to be easy and we're not going to always be happy. Happy, oh my God, that's a feeling that goes and comes. I don't even know if we can accomplish that on a daily basis anyway. I mean, so many things, so many things can happen. But you just got to keep working at it though. Mm-hmm. So real, do you, are you a sports fanatic? Absolutely. Okay, who's your fave? Well, basketball or Lakers. Okay, we no particular one? We, we struggling right now, but the Lakers are my all-time favorite team. Who's your favorite player? Uh, Magic Johnson. Ah, what you know about Magic that you don't know <laughs> about? Oh, that's my favorite. I was out, as a kid, he was an idol of mine. Still my favorite player to this day. I haven't so left. So I know now. Miss Tiffany, you, you yes. got to make sure that he know your stats just as good as he knows Magic's. <laughs> right. Uh-oh. He on it, though. He, he is on it. He is on it. That's, so that's right. a good analogy. That was right. good. Guess what? Magic been out the game for how long? Ooh. Ooh. How long? Probably like, ooh, like 30 since years. Probably. Years. <laughs> right? Plus years. About 30 years, probably. 80. Yeah, since 88, I believe. So that's a lifetime, Miss Tiffany. So you already know real ain't going nowhere. Right. Oh, I know he's invested. He's invested for the long haul. So I'm not worried. Tell him to get him a jersey and put Tiffany on the back. <laughs> right. I like that. I like that. But, 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 but check this out, security balls. Like we both had two great examples in our lives. Like okay, yep. my, both our parents, my parents just celebrated their 46 year anniversary being together. And her parents, how, how many, how many years? Forty-three. Been? Forty-three years. So we had that example placed in front of us, to as an example of how how marriage can last. Absolutely. So guess what? Y'all ready now? No matter how hard it looks, know that the next day it's not going to be as hard. So just walk mm-hmm. through it. You know, it might knock you over the head that initial day, but the next day your head ain't gonna hurt no more. Mm. It won't. And then the next day it get a little easier. And then guess what? A month later, y'all can go back and tell your friends what happened. And then just in case they go through it, they didn't got to worry about it either. Right. Your testimony, you know, help some other couples out. That's what needs to happen. No because doubt. No doubt. Real, people are not ready for it. They think yeah. everything is great. Right. All that, time they, all that time that they spent putting into the wedding, they need to put into their marriage. Yep. I don't know. I I don't know about them weddings because they be beautiful. Look like they be hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hundreds. Yeah. But you see, they put a lot of energy. They put a lot of effort into it to make sure that it's perfect. And they work through, you know, obstacles come when it come with marriage. I mean, a wedding, you know, problems arise when it comes through. They get over it because they really want that wedding. Right. They really want yeah. to help it. They really yeah. want it. So, you know, that same energy got to be put into your marriage. That's something my grandmother, my mother, all the women in my family have told me, you know, and have taught me. And that those big marriages don't last. Wow. Mm, they focus more on aesthetics and foundation. They got that bridezilla thing now, though, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Y'all go ahead and shout out y'all channel. We are the Thomas Game Podcast. Uh, you can check us out, of course, on YouTube and also follow us on uh, Instagram and Twitter as well. Thank we, you. We, and our last episode was with uh, your uh, the queen right here, security boss. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to give I want to give Jedi I want to give Jedi a shout out too. I've been watching you on Lapeef, man, doing your thing. So uh, salute to you, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm listen, out your um, stuff. I'm gonna check out your channel. I'm a, I'm gonna ask uh, Thomas Gang. I got one more question for y'all. One more question before I let you go. All so right. listen, with the new marriage, who actually pays for the wedding nowadays? Um. Well, my parents. Paid, you know, my parents are very traditional, and they were always um, the father or the parents or the bride paid for the wedding. We didn't really have a wedding. We had okay. like a small ceremony. And invited our close friends, but these days, these days, I think the women are paying because they want it more. Wow, they want okay. it more. Yeah, okay. but I don't know. Don't it quote me on it. But from it my observing, sense. from my observation, I think the women are are, are paying. Wow. 
Wow. I think I think it's a combination of both. I think you still, like she said, is, you still have uh, some people who have traditional ways. But I mm -hmm. also agree. I've, I've seen the women really want what they want in the wedding. And they'll make any kind of sacrifices to get it so they can post it on Instagram and Facebook. Wow. And they'll take out whatever they can to make sure they have their perfect day. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, wow. All right. Thank y'all. All right. Thank you. you. All, All right. right. I just so, found your channel. I just found your channel. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So Mr. Awesome has a comment. Jedi, hold on one second. How does the panel think? How does the panel think about young men who aren't financially prepared for family, but has found a wife? Should he pass her up until the financially ready or marry and build with her? Oh, Mr. Awesome. I would say build with her. But note, you're going to have trials. You're going to have some tribulations. So just get ready for it. But, you know, find some older couple or a counselor or someone that you can check in with when you don't have the answers or when times get tough. But I definitely think a couple building together is awesome. Chicago Rilla, hello. The couple pays. In particular, the man. Uh, you know what? I'm holding men responsible. These leaders responsible for these outrageous weddings that it yield nothing. I I'm really am because that doesn't make sense. Mr. Jedi, how are you, sir? I'm doing I'm good. Doing how are you doing? doing? I'm doing so well. I saw you last night going off. I'm telling you. You just so passionate. No, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I made it in the terms of, the, I posted this on the group chat or the Facebook group in Lapeef. Um, I was very um, disappointed in terms of how I conducted myself. And I know it was a heated dis uh, discussion. Um, but, and I know when I was made that apology, people's like, Mike, you don't have to apologize, whatever. But it just turned to me, I hold myself to a certain standard. I know I'm like the youngest person on this panel, whatever, but. To me, I just know that he the situations, especially as a man, that there's certain conversations where you know for a fact that we're not going anywhere where I have to increase in discernment to know, OK, this is this conversation is not productive and uh, coming from both sides where it's just becoming a screaming match um, mm. that it's just not I had to be above that. And I acted out of character last night. Um, so, yeah, so I was um, that I had to take a, a step back and just kind of just. um uh, just reflect in just terms of how I can conduct myself better in those heated situations though. But, um, and I don't, and regardless what, you know, whoever I was communicating with, what their behavior was, I control myself. So, right. But, yeah. You have to do what makes you feel correct. You have to, you have to behold within yourself. Um, I felt like you were taken up for a young lady and I think that was a, a man's role to do. Um, but you might've been fighting a losing battle, you know, that might not have been the the right place and time to do it, but I understood because I've had, I think you've even been there. I've had people take up for me that way. Against yeah, we, yes, that, yes, yeah. So I understood where you were coming from. Um, mm. And I get it though. You, you got to figure out how to handle yourself and that's real. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. All right. So deal breakers within a marriage. What do you think? Um, well, also, like I said, I got to, you know, be mindful that I'm not married yet, but I am like in a courting relationship and I can just say from, yeah, yes, ma'am. And, um, and one thing I just make sure that, uh, you know, come from my parents, you know, they've been married for over 27 years that, uh, I can just say in terms of certain examples that I see that might be a deal breaker. Um, I forgot which, uh, panel that I was on, but it was what me, black male filter and Sir Hale speaks and basically just saying, um, to me that sticks with me and which I'm actually gonna work on doing a video about is saying that uh, a woman cannot be above my principles. Right. And what I mean mm -hmm. by that in terms of like things that I consider to be in terms of morals, foundation, whatever, regardless of whether she can't cross that line in terms of like, I can't, I can't not you know, change those principles, or whatever, regardless in terms of her. And what I mean by that is that I think there's certain situations with men who are not really kind of weak minded where they're allowed things in relationship just to seek to keep her. Right. Um, and mm -hmm. actually having them, uh, more direct conversations about maybe certain things and th that might be negatively contributing to relationship. So I said, for me, what the deal breakers, what might be for me is one, like I said, it turns to honesty because 
I don't care if it's going to hurt my feelings or not. Like, don't tell me what I want to hear. Tell me what I need to know. Right. Especially from the person I'm supposed to be covering. Right. I cannot be an effective leader if you're not being, you no, know, di uh, being dishonest with me. I understand fear can become from the enemy, but I know for the a level B of transparent, that's within those vows, but also just in terms of the duty that I have in terms of you, in terms of me as my leader, as a, as a leader to you, but also to you as someone being a helpmate and a wife to me. I cannot, the, if we're not being honest with each other from both parts, that to me is a deal breaker. And if when it's a consistent pattern, and um, that there's things that were, um, that's what the red flags can be reveal itself early in a relationship than later. Um, but uh, yeah, those that to me, that's the biggest one. I think this uh, dishonesty. Well, let me say this to you. Um, what, hold on for a minute. Let me do this super chat. Eugene Steele, $5 super chat. Thank you. People want to, people want that fairy tale wedding. But as I said, so many times after that beautiful ceremony, <laughs> I just lost it. Sorry about that. After that beautiful ceremony, the real test comes. You're right. It definitely does. But Jedi, going back to you, let me say this. Um, being honest is very, very important. But all I can tell you as a man, as a leader, is that you must every day work on becoming one with that woman and allowing her to trust you. Because with trust, you will only have honesty. She'll feel comfortable enough to say to you whatever it is that she needs to say. Because sometimes I can tell you, as a woman, we may be embarrassed to take something to our spouse because not knowing how he's going to react. I guess embarrassment and fear, like you said, may live together. I don't know. But I have to know that you are a safe place and that if I say whatever to you, how about this? I'm just give you something. Jedi, honey, I wanted to kiss a girl. What are you going to do with that? Is that okay for me to say? You know, I'm your wife. Are you going to be, are you going to go crazy? Are you going to, you know, are you gay now? Are you bisexual? Or are you going to just hear and then pray over me and protect me for whatever spirit has got into my mind that's making me crazy. <laughs> so it's all in how you handle it. Hold on one second. Red Pit, Pill Hustle. Um, y'all hit that button. Y'all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, um, Jetta, I can tell you that it's just all based in how you can gain or become that leader for that woman. And if you do that <laughs> every day, you work at that. You won't work have to work uh, work on her being honest to you. It's a given. Women mm -hmm. really want to submit and be in love with their husbands. I hate to say that, but it's true. I know it doesn't look like it so much now, but it's really true. It's just that it seems like there's so many um, obstacles in the modern day that we're in that women probably don't trust or don't feel like they can. Mm -hmm. So you are a traditional or you're made traditional. So your goal, if you want that type of marriage is to make sure she can trust you, love her just that much that she will submit her life to you and you'll be fine. You don't mm -hmm. have to worry about that stuff. And, and may I respond? Um, Cause thank you. I, Cause it kind of go into like another point what talks about honesty, which is like communication, right? And this is one thing I just like just respect so much about you. Uh, when I see a major from platforms and how you just conduct yourself and how you're able to communicate in a way that you're not talking at, at, at someone, you're talking to them. And uh, to me, that's like one of the biggest things I admire about you. Um, Thank you. But I just want to say is how that, I guess, I guess just in terms of my age, just working on that um, and strengthening that to form of communication as I'm getting older. Um, because I don't know, like, obviously, you know, you've been married for, you know, for so long, but obviously, and you might have communicated, you know, effectively all the time, right? It took time to get to the point where you are today. But my just question is, like, what advice you probably give to someone my age, a man or a woman, in terms of being better and being effective communicators in the relationship? Uh, a relationship or a marriage? In marriage, basically. In marriage. Okay, um... You have to be intentional in your marriage. It's something that a woman has to want to do. And as a man, I think you need to find that out. You need to ask her probing questions about how she wants to be a wife, what that means to her, how she wants to show up. 
And if you don't hear those things that say to you that um, she's willing to do whatever or everything, then she's not the one Jedi. She's not the one. Because you can't get in there to have to pull teeth every day to just to make her become a woman. You know, then you got to get to being a wife. You know, you have to be socially mature to be a wife and a woman, a woman and a wife, I should say. Got to grow up. You know, right. it's not easy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, Black Man Unfiltered. Hello, sir. Hey, Sugar. How are you today? I'm doing good. I feel like you and I were in the middle of a conversation. Now, this mm -hmm. is not real. This is just how I feel. Right. Like we were in the middle of a conversation mm -hmm. and then you had to leave. Yeah. See? That didn't happen, but I just feel that way. You feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's, hey, you I know don't what? know why, though. You know, I just want to let you know I'm so proud of you. Well, thank you. Yes. yes. Thank I'm you. I'm so proud of you, man. You are doing the thing over here. Thank you. I'm trying. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But listen, yes. I, want, I, want, I want to come on and say this to you that um, I think that when it comes to your uh, point tonight, is that um, I think everybody, I think I said this on the platform with Je uh, Jedi. What's up, Jedi, my brother? How you doing, um, man? I think that a lot of people don't want to to look through the, the blueprints. Everybody wants everything to be uh, move in ready. Hmm. Nobody wants to build anymore. No, nobody wants to create anything to build. Everybody wants it to be moving and ready. You need to be perfect. You need to have all your money right. You need to have your mind right. You need to be mistake free. And I think that's why the divorces are, are the rates are very high now uh, right. because of that. There's no understanding. Um, and then the thing is, I think that when you start bringing up the elders and how they were married and how they conducted themselves in the marriage and it's like somebody sprayed rape. Like the younger generation don't want to hear that. <laughs> they they don't want to hear how how wonderful it was to be married for 56 years, 63 years, 46 years, and see the ups and downs and hear about grandma saying dad, granddaddy was crazy at one point, and granddaddy said grandma was crazy at one point, and they just brought that thing back together. They don't want to hear that. You know, and I and I as a kid, I remember uh hearing my grandmother say all the time. Oh, when me and your grandfather got together, we didn't have money. We had to work in them fields. I used to do women's hair, 50 cent a head to press their hair. I used to sell mm -hmm. a dozen of eggs for 25 cent a dozen. Uh, your grandfather used to, you know, mow people's yard to try to paint people's houses to make a living. And we had nothing. And then my grandfather ended up, you know, getting a break and ended up being on the pipeline for over 38 years. And mm. You know, and, and a black man in those days, 60s, 50, end of 60s, <laughs> making that kind of money, you know, that really put them in a financial freedom. Uh, but my grandmother was patient. Um, yeah. She didn't she didn't kick him out. And so I, I think that, you know, we're talking about that tonight on my show at 830. Um, we're, okay. we're talking about that. We're, we're we're talking about the elders. You know, why? Why don't the young listen to the elders anymore? OK, so before we get started, Peter Investor, great Topic of discussion. Thank you for your super chat. Listen, um, let me tell you something. I think the reason why it's hard to reference elders now is because this generation doesn't see anything beyond now. They mm. don't see themselves getting old. Um, they look at me 51 and they call me old. I don't feel like I'm old, but I do have to think about that and be like, gosh, Jedi is what, 23? Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I probably am old to him. I don't feel that way, but I don't know if Jedi can see himself being 51, you know, because there is a time that's going to come where that spouse is going to be necessary because you're not going to want to be alone. You know, I don't want to be alone. I gave the example of Corey, the blind guy, his wife, their life. He was blind prior to them being married. Mm. You know, he mm. talks about how, his wife is a nurse, of course, but she is his nurse. You know, she's beneficial to him. I'm beneficial to my husband. My husband's beneficial to me. I can't imagine being alone as an elder. Mm. So they can't wow. see beyond where they are right now. So mm. that's what we have to get them to see that you're not going to be in your 20s forever. Your needs will change in your 30s, in your 40s. Mm -hmm. When you get 50 and they be like, oh, that's old. I'm like, really? Gosh, I don't feel like I'm old. I'm a, I'm a young 50, I guess. I don't know. 
Yeah, you I are. I mean, but I know what you all know. I mean, I like cars. You know, I like clothes. I like everything you all like. What? What's the difference? I'm right. just telling you a secret about how your life can be so you cannot do some of the things that I did along the way. Very simple. Yep. Now, I do say this, though. I always say that my mama and my grandmama, they were old. <laughs> <laughs> I always say that they were old, but I just don't feel like I'm that person. So, you know, Balakan, this is a comment. I agree in the principle with everything you are saying, but what can you do if the other party wants to find themselves and have single friends in their ear to mm, live that lifestyle? Listen, I talk about it's this. Um, <laughs> he's like, peace. <laughs> Uh, you know, me, me, and Jedi, me, 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 me and Jada got something for that. Where you stool at, Jada? Wait, wait, is that the stool? Y'all gonna have a stool on them? Look, look, look. Listen. This, this, this is what we tell people on my show. Take some seats. Take several seats. When you get in there talking <laughs> like that, we want y'all to take several seats, man. Listen, Come on. Your single friends will always break up what you got. Well, try to break up what you got. I'm telling you, they will. But as the man, I don't know if Balagun, Balagun is a man or a woman, but you got to keep those people out of your relationship. You have to set the principles and the, and the standards for your relationship. They can't be there. Because mm. I tell you, uh, if you're a man, a single woman that's your spouse's girlfriend will try to get in the bed with you. She mm. will try to take oh. you your wife. It happens. It ha Y'all know it happens. She preaching. Come on, y'all. They will. If they see y'all doing good, they be you might invite them over. They'll be in the bathroom putting their hands up in the air, so their little skirt will go up in the air too, just trying to check and see if the spouse is looking. Mm. Oh, they do it. I'm they do it. You have to protect your husband. You have to protect oh, your wife. Hey, hold on. Let me write that down. This is yeah. You got to protect them. You got to protect your marriage. You can't let these single folks inside. Big bad bull. How are you? Thank you for being here. You got to protect your marriage. You got to protect. I have to protect my husband. and He has to protect me, his wife. And you have to protect that institution of marriage. Get rid of them single folks. Mm -hmm. so I have a question on that note. So one of the conversations we had last night was saying that how do you operate prior like uh, to you getting married? So in terms of, you know, are you the whole scripture? We say a man finds a wife, founds a good thing, right? Not his wife. I said a wife. Right. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is who you are and as individual prior to you, you know being given the ring that obviously is the contract of marriage but my thing is that did you have to honestly give the what you, i say the uh, attributes that come with being a wife after you got the ring or prior so i think so my question is saying is that what in terms of behavior and way you conduct yourself in terms of protecting the man that you see to be married but saying oh well until until we get married then i start being a wife then i start being a uh in terms of performing the wifely duties, whatever, so just being I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Well, let me tell you this. Um, I didn't know how big of a role the single fans pay, played until I was engaged to be the wife. And then that's when they start showing themselves. That's mm -hmm. when the arms start going up in the air and the dress skirt start lifting. And then they start talking crazy about the potential spouse, my soon to be husband or um, trying to bring over the additional boyfriends or the men that I think you should meet. You know what I mean by that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. yeah you know, anything in the world to keep me single with them, you mm -hmm. know, misery. Loves yeah, yeah. So Jedi, it happens before when well, you get indicators before that should lead you to become that woman prior. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. them, by them showing me that single friends weren't going to be good for my relationship, it helped. It did happen before, but it told me that I couldn't bring them into my marriage. You know, I can't bring y'all. Y'all can't come with me. Go get your own. That kind of thing. And, you know, everybody may not have friends like I did. I didn't really have friends. I will say that over and over again. But I just think that um, when you come married, you need to protect that relationship. Spouse, husband and wife needs to be exactly. protected. Hello, Miss Gill. How are you? So um, that is a good question. But yeah, you need to become the I think 
a man knows a wife though, uh, knows a woman with wifey potential prior to him marrying her. I don't think that's a secret. I, I, I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna I tell you agree, something I, I did have to do though. I used to have these little short skirts on. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I used to wear little short skirts now. I had the legs. I still got the legs. Uh-oh, you know, uh-oh. I had it together. So the husband was like, you know what, y'all? He was so funny because we went to this um, restaurant. Y'all probably know Golden Corral. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got over here. Out his feet. <laughs> we got over I here. Was under my skirt when I was at the bar, get my food. Because <laughs> my skirt was short. I had y'all. I was in the day of the mini skirt. Mm. I was in the day of the mini skirt. So I had. I was single woman and. I was out with my boyfriend for dinner. So, you know, and the little skirt flared out. He was like, I dare you wear that skirt. That man about to fall out that chair trying to look under your skirt. So it was still some things my husband had to bring to my attention that I needed to adjust. So Hmm. it happens before. Well, he like it because he got all them cameras on you. So he got different angles. I know. He's checking out all my stuff. Bam, bam. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> oh, come on. What a husband do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, let's see. Amateur barkeep. Hmm. My ex husband was such a nice guy. I had to tell him, quite quit. being so nice. Oh, excuse me. Quit being so nice to the other women because so many are trifling and are literally attracted to unavailable men just because they are unavailable. You are so right. You are so right. You, that's what we're saying. So listen, she knows men, women love men that are not available. So I hate it for you all. I hate oh, wow. it. But it's true. Yeah, again. Awesome says, oh yeah, there's two types of women for a single men, wives and everyone else. <laughs> but you listen, y'all gotta pay attention. Y'all gotta be very intentional with it because um a woman may not be perfect. I don't want you all to miss it having a list that's too long. Mm. You know, like I just told you, I, I had the short skirt on. I was a young woman. I was what, 20 initial meeting. I was 20, probably about 24 when I initially met my husband. I was supposed to be wearing a short, short skirt, right? And that what they do. You know, I wasn't on Instagram because there was no such thing, but I might have been, you know, who knows? It wasn't there. But what I'm saying is I'm also a darn good wife 26 years later. So, no. you know, even though I wore the short skirt and um, another thing, too. So another thing my husband did, because like I said, my husband's I'm my husband's second wife. I met him in a nightclub. There you go again. I was in a nightclub. Now, I was in a nightclub, but I wasn't about the nightclub. I was there, though. But I remember he used to say to me, um, why are your eyes red? He just knew. He was just testing me, y'all. He was testing me. I had the short skirt. The eyes was red. What this girl into? You know, I was into nothing. I had the short skirt on. This was true. But the red eyes just came from the smoky environment. I never did drugs or got high or stripped or anything like that. So he was like going down a list. But I didn't know it. So he was just asking me all these things like, surely this girl does this. Surely she does that. Just like Jedi probably does now when he's uh, vetting these women, you know, trying to figure out, is she okay? You know, he asked all those same questions. I was like, no, I don't do that. I don't do that. And he was like, oh, still though, he was puzzled. And then he would later on ask the question a different way, thinking I would answer it a different way. Still no different. We went through that probably for a couple of months. And then he realized that, okay, no, she's for real. And then, you know, it's like, I think about 90 days later, we got married. I was married within six months. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know what you want. You know what you want. Yeah. I got married in six months. When he realized that I was really who I was, you know how that thing about your, uh, what y'all say, they, they send their uh, representative. That's mm-hmm. real. You know, that's a real thing. So you have to see people in different lights. You know, why was her eyes red? And then when he seen me at home, my eyes was red too or whatever. It's like, okay, so she ain't getting high. You know, you know, she got white teeth, but her eyes red. That doesn't make sense. You know, stuff like that. You start to try to calculate and add up things because he's paying attention. I'm telling you guys to make sure you pay attention to everything. Don't just question it, you know, because it all makes sense. It really does. 
And I think you'll be okay if you do that. Don't don't overlook anything. Just brush it off or don't ask questions about it. Ask all the pertinent questions because if she's the right one for you, she'll answer them and the answers will be correct or what you want them to be. Definitely. So what do you say to the couples that um, that have been dating for um, in excess of years, eight years, 10 years, 11, 12? <laughs> you know what? Um, what would I say to a couple? I, I don't know what they're lacking. I don't know what the situation is. I think they now have just become roommates. There's no uh, foundation there anymore. I think the man who should be the leader, he needs to become the leader even eight years later, you know, and just say, you know, he's, he needs to stand up. He needs to set that foundation that was never built and say, we're getting ready to start doing this. And he needs to do it. He needs to walk it out. Definitely. And right. it's going to be hard because they have fallen into a situation where there's no, or well, not a lot of expectations from each other. Um, cause what can you say? What is it? What, I mean, what's the reason we ain't got enough money, but we can live together for eight years. Wait a minute. Right. You didn't say they live together though, did you? Yeah. Are they living children. together? Uh, no, no. I know well, I'm, the couple that I know, um, this, this is horrible, but, um, I was a kid, right. When we moved into the neighborhood that we moved in, I was a kid. And so they were dating then. And now I'm 38 years old. Right. And they, I think they just, my mom told me they just got married. Cause I was like six wow. or seven and they just got married and they're like in their sixties. So they mm. were together for a long time before they got married. Mm. Like that you wait until you 61. I mean, why even do it? I mean, <laughs> I mean well, you point, know what? Let me tell you this. Um, black man, there's a lot of secret stuff that be going on that sometimes with older people that we don't know about. Mm. You no, know, she might've been married. He might've oh. been married, oh. you know, something like that, you know? When and then that the other person's system. spouse, yeah, might have finally died or something like that. It ain't always the way it seems. You know, Ooh. I told you about that, about that young boy. It's always a little something missing. When it don't sound completely right, mm -hmm. there be something missing. You got to, you know, investigate yeah. the situation. Because I know some people like that, too. On the exterior, it seemed like, y'all should have been married. What's going on? Come to find out he got a wife. Got a wife, been separated for 32 years, but ain't Good divorced. Wow. Yeah, that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff. Yeah. Wow. Don't make sense. But that's what goes on. Yeah. But if that's not the situation, I definitely think that that man needs to gain his household back, especially if they're living together and become that leader. You know, he owes it to himself. Um, mm -hmm. And that woman definitely needs to allow him to do that because uh, they probably got kids. They got you want to set a good example. They got five, kids. and now they're five empty. Kids. Yeah, they got empty. They're empty nesters. The, the 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 last one is the same age as my brother because they went to school together. So the last mm -hmm. one is eight. That they are eighteen now. Yeah. So yeah. Well, that's <laughs> five kids, kids that's, that's gotten away because they probably have no respect for the marriage mm -hmm. concept. Nope. Mm. Wow. That's mm. it. You know, I don't know. Um, it's nothing. I mean, you never know. Yep. You never know. Because I also heard a story like that where a couple has dated seven years but did not live together and then they did get married and everything was fine. Right. See? So, you know, it can work, but they did not live together. Yeah. So it can. can but work. you know, living together, that's that's that thing, you know. Why marry her? I'm she doing everything from me, but you're not being blessed, in my opinion. Oh, right. Not being blessed. So, but those are my beliefs, though. You know, everybody don't believe that. They have their own little thing that they follow. So Yeah. Some people just believe, make up their own beliefs so they can it can fit their narrative. That's all. <laughs> you mean so they can do what they want? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you know what? It doesn't work. If you talk to them, they're not really um prospering. They're not really happy. They really don't like that situation. Mm -hmm. And they argue with you about the way you do it. Yep. They're complacent. I'm like, well, why don't you try it? Yep. You know? their, dis their dysfunction became their function. Yep. And you know what dysfunction is. We all got a little bit of it now. Y'all know. I don't talk about mine a little bit. 
So <laughs> <laughs> it definitely have. But you know, I don't know. I would just tell a woman, um, actually, I was gonna tell the man, I'm talking to the men because I want y'all to be the leaders. I want y'all to kick down the doors and beat on your chest and um do it in a way that that woman can't help but to love you, not hate you, you know. Yeah. But it seems like um, in our culture, we're so against each other for some reason. The black man don't like the black woman and vice versa. Mm -hmm. We just don't like you. I think I want to add to because um, yesterday when I did my live stream on my channel, like, I had a Sir Hale speak come here and talk about accountability, right? And he said one of the biggest things that uh, I said that the biggest detriment to our community really other than like racism, police brutality, whatever it might be, the fact that black men and black women, we have become so blinded of like actually listening to each other. Right. And, okay. um, and when, when he, when he was saying that, I think the point is that, uh, there's certain things of where we always have an agenda in terms of where we want to follow, not really knowing that becoming one with the person that, uh, you security boss, you know, saying that we need to do. It's just that I think it's also a level of fear, but also we just become so, uh, ignorant towards each other, the, like the willingness to listen, but also knowing where, um, uh, as, as men, you know, we're supposed to be leaders and, you know, in terms of women, you know, being so much is a crucial factor in terms of his leadership. Uh, it just almost feel like we're com becoming so combative. Mm -hmm. We're not moving anywhere. We're just kind of, you know, going in circles, especially, you know, when we're, we're communicating with each other. Right. And I just want to think that if, what that is, you can't also be accountable. Um, if you know, if you're not self-aware and my question yeah. is that, how many people like, you know, situations like this, men and women, like, are we really self-aware about these issues or self-aware about our actions contributing to the function? You know, are we delaying, you know, are we just becoming complacent with mediocrity in terms of like our relationship um, and uh, not actually going anywhere and actually, you know, especially as men being not only be men of purpose, but also men of direction, you know? Mm. Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you this what like this. Um, I'm a woman been married a long time, advocate for men and love marriage. Okay. But I do feel like I'm, it's only a few of us and I can never, I shouldn't say never. There are not many women that would ever come on this platform and speak to their uh, problems. I should say I'm co problems, complaints about the black men. I mean, so we can deal with it so we can hash it out so we can talk about it. I never seem to get women that um, do that. Mm. You know, so I want that. I want the women because I hear about these women all the time. And I'm sure you all, I think, Jedi, you've told us a couple times about women. Uh, how about some situations you've been through that the woman was not good? But um, I've never spoken to them and them to come up and say, well, this is why I don't like the black man or this is the problem I'm having with the black man. I've never had that happen. I would want I want that to happen. So if y'all know some, definitely tell them unsolicited when I talk to you. <laughs> I want to see it because mm -hmm. you know what? I want to see that it's true. I want to see if it's um, just a talking point or really foundational, you know, something real. Did this this really happen? Is these are your real experiences? Or are you just saying something you heard somebody else say? Right. Because right. right. there's, no. there's always a point where we want like the point of like villainizing the black man so you know so much to the point where you know we're not realizing that we're kind of forging our reality. You know where um, I only see all black men are doing this, whatever. And but some of it can come from a place of actual true trauma experiences. And but with these type of women, it's like. I've been trained in mediation, like my, my, my mother, especially in the ministry, like, you know, and she's a prophetess and she, uh, and she'd been in everything. We'll talk about abusive relationship, like with our, uh, man, the military prior to like we and my father to a point like near death to a point, like she still has like back pain to this day from it. Um, and then while I was also a high risk pregnancy and everything, uh, when I came through, when I was born, um, but she also just know in terms of women, in terms of going through actual trauma or pain and hurt about like their, uh, mannerism, their facial expression and stuff like that. So, um, I was able to you know as a man, what she taught me is just uh, give me just a terms of the ability, uh, to listen. Right. And because especially like when I deal with people that, uh, in a, in a conversation that have a very, very strong opinion about black men, I was like, 
And I and I'm, and when you see people on chat or everything like, oh, look, it's this woman, blah blah blah. I'm like, let me actually listen to what she's saying. And then mm -hmm. and until a point, if I'm listening to her, and it really it can be a plan, a sense of bitterness, or maybe she's had a black man that actually has willingness to actually listen to what she's saying, right? Or are you predetermining? Oh, I already know what you're gonna say. You know, you're 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 gonna tell us, oh yeah, screw black men, divest and mess like you know, mess all that. And I'm like, no, let me just hear what you got to say and listen to your story, right? Because I think the whole thing of what Black Men on Filter said is that um, he probably said it better than I can, is that everyone needs to be heard, but not everybody wants to listen or listen mm -hmm. in a way. Um, right. He, 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 yeah. Can you say it better? I don't, I don't want to butcher it, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. You can say everybody. Everybody wants to. Everybody wants to be heard, but nobody wants to listen. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, every, everybody, you know, everybody's, ah, you know, I, I want this. I want this. I want this. But but nobody's concerned about the other spouse. Nobody's concerned about what their what their needs are, and both have needs. And and when you put all the energy into one and not the other one, it's it, you know it's uh, all the men say happy wife. Happy. I grew up listening to this happy oh, wife, happy life. Uh, if I can't do everything for my wife, and you know what are you getting out of it? None, just man. As long as she's happy, I'm good. And that's why men look like they're seventy when they're forty, and the women look like they're thirty when they're fifty. It, it, it's just, <laughs> There, there's a complete difference because a man is completely mentally drained. He's physically drained. He can't, mm -hmm. he can't really get around like he wants to. I mean, you're basically killing him. And the other night we had um, Black David on the show, and he broke down in tears. Tears. He was crying. Yes. About his uncle's wife that drove him to death. Death. He died. Mm. And you know, he she treated him so bad, and and you know, and he just. I mean, he had a moment, man. I've never seen Black David like that. Never. Uh, he had a moment where he just cried, man. We just let him have his moment, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it happens to men every day. Men are worn out because of the happy that's not, life. Happy that's life. not so uncommon, you yeah. know. That really isn't. I've heard heard and witnessed something happening like that too. Tragic. Yep. Yeah. Um, it ha it's happening all the time. We hear it all the time how the men are, the women are keeping the kids from the men. And the men just can't take it. it they're frustrated and they're mm -hmm. taking the spouses, their lives, you know, yeah, it's happening. Right. They have their point You're talking about mental illness, I think. But um, yeah, that's definitely our condolences go to Black David. I, I didn't see that. Where were you all at? Who was on, who's on my channel? Black Men Unfiltered. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Okay. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, he, he, um, so yeah, Jedi. He, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was saying uh, a couple of people were didn't know you had a channel, including me. Would you go ahead and shout out your channel? Yeah, uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, it is Jedi Mike Seven Reviews News and Truth. I basically do a ton of movie reviews there, but also I talk about uh, things going on in the world today. Uh, I talk about solutions of, of younger black males becoming the best version of themselves. As I work, become the best version of myself. So I just recently I did a live stream about accountability, and I also um, do I also take certain characters, literature from film, and kind of kind of give it a more educational platform uh, and try to give them like life lessons, how to, uh, how to become better leaders, better uh, younger men as they're moving and growing. Uh, so I use uh, different movies and topics and stuff like that. So we have, so we have a lot of fun in my channel, but moving forward, I'm going to be doing more things uh, in terms of actually education moving forward and teaching uh, younger black males, a uh, certain thing about accountability, talk about leadership, communication, stuff like where it might be, especially also in business as well on uh, the tech industry. Uh, Cause I'm my backgrounds in tech. So, but yeah, that's what um, I'm moving forward. My channel was Jedi Mike seven. There's no space between Jedi Mike or sevens together. One word. Um, but yeah. Oh, good. So what was your last movie review? Uh, so last one I did, uh, I actually, so I did a live stream. It was four hours. Um, mm. and it was the first live stream we did for the year, and um, it was basically going over the best and worst of twenty of twenty twenty one films and media, whatever. And oh, okay. I'm actually gonna clip uh, probably this ending part I did because I was gonna review the Matrix. Um, oh, which I, I knew you were gonna say the Matrix. Yeah. Um, you should do yeah. Lucy. What? Do Lucy. Lucy. Say again? The Lucy. movie Lucy. Oh, Lucy. Oh, I could. I could do that. Yeah, because also there, I, been got in the Matrix. Yeah, I got requests from people <laughs> to do like movie reviews also from different times. Like, you know, what because mm -hmm. one of my one of my mm -hmm. live streams I did um was called Black Men Need to Be Educators, right? So I used the film Lean on Me from Morgan Freeman, and I actually get to and traits he exhibited in that film and why that's also film so provoking in our community and traits that might be lacking today that we don't see coming from black boys um in the school system. So that's what I do. So I take a okay. film or whatever and try to give an education. But yeah. 
So listen, Napoleon has a comment. It says, it's crazy because us guys feel like no one cares about our problems. We just got to get over it. That is not true. Wow. That's not true. Not coming from me. I understand what you're saying, though. Yep. So that's, you got to get your wife. Feel. You got to get your wife. A lot that's of what I say. That way. Yeah. Wow. Y'all need to be beating on y'all chests and knocking down doors and owning businesses and making money and all that stuff. Nothing mm-hmm. negative, just positive. Maybe not easy, but positive. Hey. Yeah, we got to get get something back together cuz I do feel and um I do feel that there's a lot of anger between um men and women in our culture. Right. Yeah. It is. Cuz like nobody, I think yeah, yeah, I do like I do like Scarlett Johansson. I like Lucy. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, cuz I think um there's also there's another film too I'm going to do uh is what uh Adam McKay is called it's on Netflix it's called Don't Look Up. As with Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Yeah, Lawrence. yeah that's and a new it, one. Yeah, and yeah. basically that whole film, I just thought that's just a message in terms of life in this society, mm-hmm. as a culture, you know, because you can place that, like a comet coming to Earth, you can put the pandemic, you can put climate change, whatever it might be, and how we might operate as a people in terms of if this actually possibly happened. Um, and, and this is also another thing that's not really... Um, calling it religious but you remember the scene and the end in the movie at dinner table nelly folks were you know they're all phds and everything stuff but they did a prayer at the end i was like at the end when mm. it gets to a point you know like yeah i just thought that was very fascinating it was a good movie about life but i'm actually gonna do a movie uh review about that too but yeah okay. so listen um i like the movie i didn't get to give it my full attention but i um need to go back and look at it in, in its entirety but i did like the part about how the uh, chief of staff who just didn't take it serious that this Mm-mm. thing was getting ready to be over. Right. That That's what took me back. But listen, mm-hmm. hello, Snuggles, um, 668. Snuggles says, can you all explain to me what is culture? For me, what is culture? It's a group of people who have things in common, things that they like, things that they do things that they all participate in, the food that they eat, the music that they enjoy, and typically an area in which they live. What do you all have to say about that? Ditto. I think it's the same thing. Ditto. Um, Everything you said was what I was going to say. Yep. (laughs) Now, I don't mean that we all act alike now. I don't mean we all act alike. Right. Everybody acts different. It means that we like like certain musics, we enjoy certain foods. That's that culture. Um, you know, certain like common things that we have in common. And Hope I say it's good that you question. defined it because women are the ones who transmit it most. Is that like it transmits culture? So I was like really glad to you know like having you define it as best because I mean, um, especially in terms of how we have in terms of family bringing in like folktale stories, uh, culture mm-hmm. with food and everything like that. Like I said, women yes. are very, very influential in terms of that is through culture and women have, a, a, mm-hmm. uh, I think they have the over men, you know, 10 times, a hundredfold. But yeah. Yeah. That's what I think it is. Um, but, uh, what was I getting ready to say to y'all? But then any, anyway, um, what do y'all think about this though? After us going through all of this and me with the deal breakers and really they're not any, what do you all think? Uh, Are there deal breakers? Absolutely. Absolutely. There is. But I think it's also in terms of, uh, uh, okay, I keep going back to uh, movies, but it's a book called uh, Perks of Being a Wildflower. It's a book that's actually very predominant in my age with people. So they probably know uh, what I'm talking about. Um, But one of the lines was uh, from this uh, English teacher is saying, you know, um, why do we get so disrespected or, you know, in relationships, whatever? He's like, because we accept the love we think we deserve, right? Mm. And I mm. think we, I think we don't realize that as, you know, um, you know, there's a lot of things, you know, we tolerate as a people, a lot of things men tolerate, a lot of things women tolerate. But a certain point is that, you know, you can, you, I emphasize that you control the peace, you know, in your mind and your heart. But, when it comes to a point where I said that for me, that no woman's above my principles, like your principles in terms of is also going to link terms of who you are and what is your foundation. Right. You know, because we mentioned so things about all this thing of uh, 
what we're willing to tolerate and things that we might not make us a big deal and or red flags we shouldn't identify. But, you know, like I said, when uh, and I, actually black male filter can do the oppression better, but I talk about what my, what my Angela. <laughs> I, I, I got you, bro. You ready yes. for it? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Maya Angel- you yeah, my Angelo, Maya Angelo said um, she said, when someone shows you who they are, believe them, believe them. <laughs> yes, exactly what she said. But Jetta, I think all that should be identified before you actually marry. I agree with you. Yes, I just so think we just we don't. Say, this... Oh, go ahead. Wait. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I just said that I did that the fact that we don't emphasize so much on the vetting process because one, what you what what is the reason why you're rushing or no rushing the marriage? Which you know, um. Because like on women's side, you know, they can say, oh, well, uh, I'm just rushing because like I don't want to make sure we're at the right time. We'll make sure all my girlfriends are there, blah, blah. Again, you're working, focusing more on the aesthetics than you are the foundation. Mm. Then why are you rushing, you know, get married when you're not whole as individual? I would uh, when what's his name? Uh, Mr. Austin was talking about, um, you know, you're not established. And yet you saying you want to have a woman to follow that. What was she following? I don't agree with that, Jedi. I don't. Let's I mean, I don't talk- know exactly what we're talking about far as not established, but I do think there is something in growing together. I do think there is a good quality in that. I, I absolutely agree with you. But my thing is that there's some point where when we men like we we claim that we because as much as we claim that a lot of women, you know, have issues with submission to leadership. I also want to emphasize how many men are actually equipped to be leaders right now. What comes with that? Are you actually having the foundation where, okay, I might not be the the quote, quote, we talk about high value, man. I don't have the six figure job, whatever the business that I'm going to be creating in 10 years. But if a woman sees that vision or sees that man being on his purpose and with, and then I think that she can follow that, which goes to your point of growing with him. But that also in- emphasized to me on men that a man who lacks purpose, a man who lacks ambition to me is a lost man, right? Now that does not equate to you being, you know, being a six figure uh, earner doesn't equate to you, you know, being the CEO of Fortune 500 company and driving the Lexus, all this stuff that we claim to be so much, again, aesthetics now foundation. But women, like you said, women know people, any knowing that women know people know too in your network. I mean, they people know the fact that, okay, you don't have to have, um, you know, I can see someone in the process of becoming that, of becoming who, whoever God intended him to be in that vision that I know that he's implementing and being consistent in terms of him getting to that goal. So with that woman growing with him, she has to see that. Not saying she has to see the, like I said, the Bentley or anything like that. But like I said, I, I, I'm not gonna act like there's certain women out there not stupid. They know subconsciously a man who's you know on his purpose and going somewhere, right? And so I, I emphasize that is that on men is that you're making sure that you have a strong foundation for her to follow and grow with, and. Uh, and that's why I feel that's important in terms of having the baseline. And so way that when you get into those situations where when you guys are growing with each other, when you have this conflict, you got to remember, hey, listen, you no, know, we, we we were friends one time. You know, all this stuff we went through, we, you know, now we're just going to throw away for what now for this mess? No, no. So when you say this, let me say this before. And I think I don't know if you were there, Jedi. Um, I do think a man should not move towards being married unless he's 30 and older. I've said that before. I think mm-hmm. it should be, a man should be 30. A woman can be younger, but a man 30 and over. Mr. Bennett here said, does she love him or is his potential? I don't think potential is a reason to be married. I mm. think a man should have more so dreams, visions with purpose because potential, we've already talked about this. You could lose that at any given time. Anything right. can derail you That's from true. being able to accomplish something. But if you have a dream, a vision of accomplishing something, you'll be more on that task to do so. You'll you'll see yourself being something that you're not that day and you'll work towards it. A man to get a job and just work there forever, which there are workers and workers are good. I mean, we're supposed to have them. But as far as a, getting married young and the man not being, like you said, Jedi, complete in his, I'm assuming, leadership, I would definitely go with somebody that has a vision and a dream of whatever he wants to do and work with him as wife towards that. Mm-hmm. That's what 
that grow together. Yes. Not just we getting married because we ready to start having sex. Right. I agree with you. I <laughs> agree with you. Right? Mr. Awesome, Mr. Awesome says at Jedi Mike 7, if he has a vision and self-awareness enough to know he isn't ready to take care of a family and be a father and husband, he has to. You know, so. Absolutely. I agree. I think we all agree on the same yeah, thing. Mr. Rooker. Absolutely. Prenup guy is in the building. How are you, sir? What's up? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? Doing you good. Doing My well. time is drawing near. I'm about what 20 days out, right? I yes. think it's looking good for you. Well, it's a little weird, but we'll find out next Tuesday. So far. What do you mean I weird? Of... Well, I set the date. We got the attorney. And she was just like, okay. She wasn't as excited as before. She just said, okay, I'm ready. That's it. So her excitement kind of died after when the new year changed. But we'll see if she's going to sign. I'm not changing. I think she'll sign. It's no big deal. It's not going to change anything. Uh, I don't know. Is This is just mediation. It comes down to this is how it's going to be. And she did have some questions um, like, was it Sunday? She did have a question about um, we should put a cheating clause in it. Mm. I told her even before this, like, no, there's not going to be any clauses. This is going to be my prenup that you're going to go over with the mediator and then you're going to get your own attorney and y'all going to look it over and say yes or no. So mm. I have a backup plan if she says no. Damn. But you wouldn't cheat, though, would you? <laughs> wow. Hey, back. <laughs> you got a plan B. You got a plan B. Yeah, it's not going to be like another woman or anything. It's just more like, you know, I'm going to give her 30 days to leave. Oh, oh, no. oh, 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 oh. So you, don't, you don't love this woman yet. That. That you don't love this woman yet. Right? No, I love this woman. I just have a trust issue when it comes down to the money. And it's not because of what she did or anything. It's just the fact that she's a woman. And they tend to change their mind when it comes down to something serious as marriage. So I just wow. want that writing. Oh, well, and Sharia, continue loving wow. on her. You won't have any problems. Continue to show her. Well, you said it. You got to have trust. If she don't, yeah. so you you're putting up a wall. So you're making it hard for her to trust you. Sharia, as long you as you love her. Sharia, you got to work on. Sharia, you got to come Sharia, get out these comments. Sharia, Sharia. Say, Sharia say she can be Plan B. After them 30 days, she said she would marry you. Okay. Well, yeah, mm. we'll see. It'll be a weird yeah. Valentine's Day. But, uh, <laughs> I don't no, see anything wrong with the prenup. I, I do don't see anything wrong woman. with it. I just need her to sign it. Just put it. That That's the number one cause for divorce anyway. So I'm trying to prevent this by having her put it in writing. That's okay. She'll do it. Yeah, she'll I think do. she loves you. Okay, so Snuggle668 has a comment. Does your culture allow all the men to marry younger women with no problem and how much older should the man be than the woman in your culture? I can't determine that. My husband's five years older than me. Would you allow? Mm, I think a man finds his wife. So it's up to him to decide, you know, the age difference in the woman that he wants to take on. Hopefully I answered your question. All right. So there's another part. Uh, uh, and what's uh, your thoughts about an older woman marrying a younger man, at least 10 years, Oh, her junior or more. Oh. That's that's what Nick Jonas is, right? Uh, right. Well, yeah, Nick is. Jonas, his wife is ten years older. Yeah, she is. <laughs> ten. Oh, could I see myself oh. with a forty-year-old man? Hmm. Uh oh, change. Uh oh, your husband over there with the cameras. Tell him to change the angle. I know. Change you got to change, change that image. Change you got to from this side. I don't even know, y'all. I don't think I could do that. No. I think I would always go older. Yeah. That should always. be. Like more like Morgan Freeman, maybe. How old is Morgan Freeman? 71. 71. Mm, 51, 70, 20 years. Security boss. I love you. You <laughs> 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 Morgan on his show like, okay, baby. <laughs> That's the best we can do. You want, you want love, don't you? That's all you can get. 
You'll probably be asleep all the time. <laughs> oh, so security oh. boss, I, so I have to leave because I have to prep for my show in That's 30 fine. minutes. Yeah, I got to leave. Okay. However, if you, you want to stop by tonight, it would be great to have someone. Uh, you're not old, but it would have it would be have, nice to have you come in for like of like five or ten minutes to let these young ladies know what the real deal is because we're talking about why don't we listen to elders anymore why don't we listen to yes. women that have the knowledge and the wisdom why are we shunning them away um, first so, person call me an elder i quit uh, <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding i definitely do that thank you sir all right thank you so much nice. and congratulations yes, on being monetized everybody have yes. a good night Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I gotta go to y'all. Hey, Rodney says my husband is twenty-one years. I know she got it made. Go, girl. Go, girl. Mm -hmm. She did it. Jedi, I understand, sir. Thank you so much for your support and being here. You Absolutely. always show up for me. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm actually gonna get your Another contact info. Um, killer, killer content creator. <laughs> did you hear that? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, I did. No, but yeah, what I'm you saying. I said I'm gonna get your contact info. Uh, I would love to also just you know talk to you about some other things um moving forward and everything. But um okay uh, but yeah, but um I, I hope you guys take care and everything, but continue to support. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Mr. Rucker. Yes, ma'am. Listen, I think the young lady will sign it, but um you gotta love her. You gotta love her and allow her to trust you, and you gotta build up trust for her. If she's done nothing wrong. Don't bring in those transgressions from past relationships into this relationship. See her for what she is. I mean, if she's done everything you ask, she's signing up prenup. She's loving you. She wants to marry you. Accept it. Mm -hmm. Tear down that wall. Mm -hmm. Burn it up. Can she sign it first, and then I'll do? Yeah, it. yeah. No, I want. I'm agreeing with you. I want her to sign it. I want her to do whatever it is to get your trust. But then I want you to be aware of what's going on around you when she's done everything she needed to do to gain that trust. Don't continue to make her. I don't want to use that word. Don't continue to make her continue to prove herself to you. Once she's done it, accept it. Uh, what do you mean by prove? Like, I need consistency, too, after. after well, she's going to be consistent, but recognize what's going on don't be so much in your non-trusting mode that you can't see what's happening because you just said i don't trust i have trust issues that's something you're bringing into the relationship once she's done everything you asked her to do she signed a prenup whatever it was you asked she did it recognize who she is and let go i'll let go and i'll be very consistent about it but as far as like financial trust i just need that documentation and accounts will be separate except for one joint account so okay that's pretty so a little bit yeah a little bit by a little bit i'm not too harsh i'm just harsh ish that's all i don't think it's harsh i just think you've had some situations i've heard of some that may not be good for the man that's okay yeah i mean if you look at the divorce rate what's the main reason why people get divorced it's over finances so i'm just trying to be proactive and just ask some questions and I don't understand, like, how come men just don't ask these questions before they get into a serious relationship? Like, what's your finances like? What's your credit score? If you were serious about oh, this person, yeah. you would ask this. Well, they're not intentional. You're just the person that has been intentional, and you should be. And she should appreciate that because you'd be beneficial for her also. So it's a plus. Yes. Why can't she put in that she can give it? I'm looking at that comment, like, because this is my this is my situation I'm laying out. So there will be no rules on me. Oh, my. <laughs> you don't need any rules. You know how to govern yourself, don't you? Yes, ma'am. Well, that's all it takes. Yeah. I, I can believe you might be disciplined. Yes, I am. Trying yes, to she don't need no prenup to leave you or she don't need to list that in a prenup. If you're the person that's cheating, if she wants to go, she don't need that. And if you love her, you're still going to be broken with your money. So right. it doesn't matter. Your heart still be broke. Yeah. Now those are just, it happens. If something else like that happens, like cheating or anything, yeah. Humans, we're humans. We're going to have feelings. It just I just don't want to give her a retirement package, no matter what happens. <laughs> Understood. Uh, Snuggle668 says, uh, I wonder if the woman was a man, if she 
would she have such high hopes for him or would she be very critical of his behavior? Critical of my <laughs> one a man. I guess she's trying to re he's trying to reverse the roles. Is she oh. as critical of you as you are of her? Oh, okay. Well, um, I guess if she was making the money and she's laying down the foundation and she's paying all the bills, then that's all fair. But, you know, in this situation, that's not going to happen. I don't allow it to happen. Even right. if a woman was to make more money than me, I would still want my lifestyle the way I want it. So she's coming into my lifestyle. <laughs> We're playing the hard out here for a pimp music for you. But yeah. no, I don't see you like that. I see you're quite disciplined and I think you'll do well. But listen, let me get a shout out. Red Pill Hustle at Mr. Yeah. Rucker. <laughs> you the goat. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. Listen, people are picking up on you. I think they're taking your advice. What you got to say about that? They should. They should at least talk to a mediator. And yeah, it does cost some money, but it's just like a third party that says like, okay, what are your finances and how is this marriage going to work? It's just a third party, not supposed to be biased. Um, some of them range to about $300 to about $800 per hour. You only need one hour, so that's what I'm trying to get. Like, hey, you got one hour. This is how it's going to be. Let's quickly do it. So it's like, let's get it in and out. Now, when it comes down to people not talking about this, before they get a ring, it's going to be problematic if you do this after a ring. Because it's like, ooh. That's a lot of now you got that symbol on her hand. She told all her friends, and it's like you might have to take that back, and that's hard. So oh Lord, take yeah. it back. I tell you. So listen, Snuggle says, Did you both sit down and talk to a divorce lawyer? The mediator is just a mediator. You all haven't gone to a divorce lawyer. Have oh you? no, no, mediator will be very simple, not a divorce lawyer. Okay, good. I think it'll work. We're getting close, and she's still around. But did I did not hear you say though, your plan B is. If she doesn't sign, she got 30 days to move out. Yes. So why are you allowing her to live with you? Think of it as like a free trial, you know, living together. We need to see how it is, see how like our schedule is going to be, where, you know, where we go to work. How is this going to be? So it's like a trial run and this is how it's going to be. I say, like, okay, this is starting to work. It's starting to become normal. So other than that, it's just like, we'll just do some expensive, I don't think necessary, but apparently necessary wedding and we get some paperwork going in and it doesn't feel the same. It doesn't feel different after we do it, but you know, I need to see, you know, bad habits and good habits. Mm. I know it's fortification. I know it's anti-Christian. I don't suggest people doing that, but um, in this situation, um, we made an exception. So Does she get some kind of servants package if it doesn't work? <laughs> service package yeah why not okay. i bet okay. she's putting a lot of work how long has this been going on um let's see this has been since march she's putting a lot of work that's almost a year the service package when you don't want it no more you give them a little something a little parting gift right set them up with at least what six months of rent and um moving expenses whoa why no? why, why that could you she's done it your way right she moved well, in. i think you're right I, I, it'll be some sort of severance package i guess there you I go something you're trying to make it strictly business let's just keep it business then especially if it don't work let's just keep it business it's only severance business package. if something doesn't work building listen three months of rent and moving expenses i think that's enough to get her on her feet three months three months Guess, guess what, though? You dodged a bullet. Because if she was bad, just think about how it would be. You can pay for three months just to get rid of a, you know, something bad. Yeah, but three months. How'd you come up with three months? I was thinking like a month. 30 days. That ain't enough. Because she's been living with you for what? Nine? Yes. Listen, we got to give yeah, her at least a quarter. Sure. Yeah, you got to make this make sense. Service package makes sense to me. I'm sorry. See, that's the whole point of freedom. There'll be no service. Excuse package. me, severance. severance. Should I spell it also? Severance. Severance. What yeah, you get when they kick you out. <laughs> well, why should I do oh, that for three months? Why not just one month? I've never heard of a severance package that was for one month. 
I think it has to make sense. So three months you know, makes more sense than one month. Three months makes and moving expenses. Don't forget that it costs a lot of money to move. Well, shouldn't that be part of the package? The why is yeah, it is. Separate? Yeah, all of that. No, because you know it costs a lot to move. Right. So I know. And she don't want that. first and last month for the new place. So you know. Right. Because you're treating it like a job. Listen, well, let me read this. Security by some six months worth of rent when she didn't want to sign it. Oh, no. Yeah, no, listen. He says she got 30 days to get out, and she may be thinking that she's getting ready to get married. She thinking lifetime. He thinking if you don't sign this paper, you got to go. So I don't know her situation, but she got to hurry up and get it together. And in today's time, you know, the expenses for a new apartment, moving, and he's breaking up with her. Are you? I mean, is that the end of it? The relationship? If she doesn't want to sign, we don't continue to go on. Well, it's that's the whole point. You get into a relationship, you get engaged, and get married. If it, you know, if something happens, there'll be a weird situation. It's like, okay, we're just kind of in this weird situation where nothing happens. It just nothing. But you moved her in. You moved her in, though. Yeah, because the intent. The intent was to get married, up. though. Why didn't you just pay for her to to be in an apartment across town and check out her schedule? Need to share expenses. The next time, wait a minute. You just say y'all sharing expenses? Yes. Oh. Okay. So she's paying to be there. I yes. need to talk to her. I need to talk yeah, to her. my privacy. <laughs> privacy has a cost. <laughs> whatever i'm <laughs> sure she's gonna sign i'm sure it's gonna be all right yeah. i'm just looking at you yeah I think you, so um, snuggles is saying so you're basically telling this young man if his girlfriend doesn't sign he still need to pay for his girlfriend to leave oh i agree God. you got it snuggles <laughs> i have to pay for her to leave. departure yes mm. keep it in a ring isn't it you know what that's a good point so yeah, I knew this, you would see it my way sooner or later. Either that or a ring. So okay. Yeah, how much? How much would you consider a good price for a ring? Ooh, Mr. Rucker, I'm old school. I don't believe in putting all your money in that stuff. I think she needs to uh, earn that. I don't believe in that. I mean, I'm 26 years. I would say, let's see, going back to. So when she moves in, it's going to be actually, so when y'all get married, two years of being together, right? Right. So I wouldn't go over maybe a carrot. So what? Somewhere between $2,500, $3,500? Okay. I was thinking that too. I was going to actually have a higher budget. I was thinking five, five grand. Above. No, no. That you, that's mm -hmm. too much? Okay. Yeah. Maybe I five. mean, you got to see how this, I'm, I'm with you on some things now. I'm not trying to, No. One carrot, she's living in the house with you, y'all building a foundation, and then at five years, you know, go up a little bit, double it, you know, what you spent the first time, double 10 it. years, then you can um, double that, and then by that time, she ought to be done with diamonds and moved on to something else, you know, I don't think so you need to spend over $10,000 for the ring, or even that much. So you're talking about anniversary rings or something like keep always adding value to the ring. I I got diamonds all the while, so <laughs> I don't okay. consider it anniversary. I trade up. <laughs> oh, okay. So, you that know, makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, but I'm done now, so it gets to a point that it's time to move on to something else. But I'm sure yeah. you probably want kids and things of that nature too. Yes. Later. Okay. Yes. So <laughs> listen, Redfield Hustle. Thank you for the super chat. You oh, have to right, sign right. the contract to get the severance package. No, 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 no. It's one or the other. She don't get to cry. She doesn't get anything. If Mr. Rucker told her early on, she would have to sign a prenup. Absolutely not. Laugh, laugh. <laughs> she knew what time it was. Is this true? Yes. I mean, okay. I'm, I'm so the you didn't prenup. You tell her about the severance package. Well, that's only if something bad happens. That wasn't part of the plan, but I'm just that's like, you know, giving her some grace if something really bad happens. But did you tell her if something really bad happens, I have a plan B for you to get out my house in 30 days? Did you tell her that? No, I did not. 
See red pill? He didn't <laughs> tell him. No, he I didn't. didn't. I didn't. But everything's oh, yeah. going oh, smoothly. No. So then, like, you know, why why say that? Uh, well, I mean, you know, if you want to make it um an open situation, you want to communicate everything so she'll know exactly what she's getting into. Mm. Then it you know. seems like that she'll win no matter what happens. It should just be. And like, what's wrong with her winning? You just I trying think. to dodge a bullet. And yes, there's no need, no reason for both of y'all not to win. Y'all just may not be winning together. Well, she needs to figure that out if things go wrong. If things go right, she doesn't have to worry about nothing. I'll take care of it. You don't want her to play no game, though. You don't want her to pretend to be this person. And then three years down the road, you realize she's not that person. Yeah, see, I know my feelings may be hurt, but at least my pockets won't. That's why the prenup is so important. Like, if she changes up within three years or five years, then yes, feelings will be hurt, but she won't get a severance package. Or okay, at least a big but one. let me tell you this. A broken heart is a real thing. It hurts. It really does. So just keep it that is. in mind. It is. As long as she doesn't Do I get the first interview with you and the missus? Yes, yes, you do. All right, all right, all right. Things go bad, be like, well, listen, <laughs> you say I'm trying to make you spend a ton of money. I'm not. I'm not though. You know I'm not, right? Yeah, I know you're not. I'm frugal anyway. So it's like, okay, I look at this like yes or no. So I live in that frugal I saved lifestyle. Save your money on the ring. Yes, you did. Yes. Hey, Bolo. I saved you money on that. I don't believe in. I mean, I think she should have a nice one. I think it should be representation of your um, your union with her. I do agree, yes. but I keep your money in your pocket. Don't don't go broke with that. Oh, no, I won't. I won't. She'll get a nice ring. And what's going to be engraved is property of Mr. Rucker, just in case. I got to hmm. put my stamp on it. Okay. Listen, leave that lady and find someone else that's on your level. Oh, I don't know. Well, any woman that I pick is on my level. So as long so, as I pick them and they just fit into my lifestyle, they're just fine. They just got to okay, sign Okay, so something. Ripley Hustler says, I meant when signing a contract with a job, that's when you're entitled to severance. Well, listen, Red Peel, the way I see it, she's been working for him since March of 2020. So let's read on. If he was upfront about the prenup, she knew the relationship was going to come to a close. <laughs> no, <laughs> she don't know that it's come to come to close. She probably thinks she can negotiate some things because she's been there working uh, very well yeah. since March. Am I right about that? Yeah. You probably but, think she yeah, like there's more yeah. time to where like I, I owe this and that. Like, well, mm -hmm. no, that's why we go into mediation. So I was like, this is how it's gonna be. There's not going to be like severance packages, except for the extreme course of things don't turn out well. But other than that, like, nah, we ain't putting clauses and making any kind of changes. There you go. So listen, Snuggle say a broken heart plus a broken wallet. How do you think he will be able to recoup? Listen, Facts. I'm hoping none of this happens to him. So hopefully that won't be his story. Hopefully Facts. they can just, you know, live together forever and everything is good. Mr. Austin says, how long has she had to sign? And did she leave her own lawyer to look over it? If not, the prenuptial easily be thrown out for under duress. Shout out to TLA. That so is listen, true. Let me tell him. Let me tell him, Mr. Rucker. This is not even the prenup yet. This is the mediation for the prenup. <laughs> yes. So understand, y'all. We're just talking about what's getting ready to happen. So... We all going to just wait and see. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. You are right. So, so we ain't even got there yet. So right. we're just talking about it. Yeah, yeah, that distress, this mediation will eliminate that because we're giving it proper time that we're talking to a mediator. You're going to get your own lawyer. I'm going to get my own lawyer. There's not going to be any kind of confusion. So when we sign, that is it. Things will be much smoother. But, I understand. Yeah. See, so now you're commu you open up the lines of communication, but... You're also saying that there's nothing's going to change, right? Yeah, that's my biggest fear. It's like, okay, mediation went well. Then I got my lawyer. She got her lawyer. Then like, oh, yeah, we have some ideas. It's like, oh, <laughs> I done told her for months this is not going to change. Like, no. Yeah. 
I got I'm it. It's good that. though. It's gonna work out. I think she's understanding. Yeah. So What's listen, up, Snuggle say, I told you to keep your money in his pocket, but at the same time, if she doesn't sign the prenup, you are telling him to spend his money for six months to get her new place. Very interesting. Listen, I already told you what was going on. She's mm -hmm. been working for him and with him since March of 2020. If something goes wrong, he needs to make sure that she leaves on a good note. And I think he agrees with me. I do. She's been interning. <laughs> she not hired. <laughs> oh, Mr. Awesome, you're right. Yes. Yeah, Mr. You're on my side. I thought you and I were here. I'm just feeling like you don't understand me right now. <laughs> but none of that's going to happen. It's all going to be good. It's all going to be good. Yeah. Does she have yes. any debt? Snuggles say, does she have debt? Actually, no. No, she doesn't. See there? It's getting better every time. I keep listening. It's getting better. Yes. Miss Mills, oh, excuse me. M. Mills says, this is why everybody should stay in your own house until you get married. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rick, I am a little disappointed in you for that. So you you do need to pay that six months if, if you got to go to plan B. Just for making that mistake, six months. So I got to pick. Oh, no, wait a minute. It's not six months. We said 90 days. Yeah. Only 90 days. 90 days. I See, said they 30. They got you up to six months. That was doing better for you. Yeah, I said 30. Now you're saying 90. So, okay. Probably me in the middle No, it's 90. It's 90. Probably me you the said middle 30. 60. I said 90. Should meet in the middle and do 60. Oh, whatever. Pronounce those <laughs> two, but we have to be fair as men. I don't think he's interested in that right now. Um, can't come to the party and use everything up without replenishing what you've taken. She has value too if you're vetting her for marriage. Value. Think about that. Mm hmm. Value. Like, uh, what? Value. Like, oh. she will have, value will come if she signs. Oh, wait a minute. So you don't see any value. And this young lady, unless she signs your prenup. Oh, I do. It's just I need that in writing, though. Like, soon as she does that, it's like, okay, she's doing it out of love, not for money. That's all. And all this macho stuff that I'm doing, quote, unquote, what people are saying in the chat, this will all come to an end as soon as she signs. But if she doesn't, then it's like, oh, I got to put my wall up. Mm. Does she cook and clean? Uh, yeah. That ain't hard. That ain't hard to answer. Wait a minute now. What, what took you so long? Well. <laughs> what took well, you so long to answer that question? It's not as often as I would like. Mm, you need to start having some communication about that. Oh, we have. Okay. <laughs> we have. <laughs> don't, don't add no month to that plan B, though, because we had 90 days. And, you know, the more we do, uh, the more you yeah. have to pay for 60 days. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Listen, you're going to get married. Stop playing. Yes. Uh -uh. Just stop playing. Yeah, I see myself as a good husband, so I'm ready for it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I'm ready for it. Oh, is she so nasty? Oh, my goodness. Who are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Doing what? The things uh, people say. Just random <laughs> like, words. What are you trying to say? Yeah, it was just random Listen, words. M. Bill says, Mr. Rucker, why would you want to marry her if you don't see value in her? Ooh, good question. I do see value, but I need it in writing. Like everything is on the up and up. I'm liking it. I'm loving it. It's like, hey, let's just put pen and paper. That's all. I don't want to just get into the feelings and all that stuff. That's good. It's all stored inside. It'll come out soon as she signs. Mm. So I got a question. Yes. Seeing that you feel that way, how did you so easily open your doors to allow her to move in? Oh, she has a great family. I love her family. Um, every, everything was running fine. It almost seemed like it's too perfect, but man, I just head over heels over this woman. It's so good. I wanted to seal the deal. I want her off the market. But man, uh -huh. I just need her to sign it. It's like we're only one inch away from just you getting my complete trust. 
So it's going to happen. She's going to be my wife. I'm going to be her husband. But man, I I swear, if there can't be any hesitation to get to that place, it's like nothing. Like I don't want any changes or nothing. You you're messing up a lot of plans. Listen. I heard something in you I had never heard. So I know you're going to be good. You said you want her off the market. Yes, you never ma'am. sold that vulnerable side of yours. It's always prenup. So you're just faking for us. I got you now. Yeah, oh, no, it's still prenup no matter what. Like, yeah, yeah, it is, but you in love. Oh, it really doesn't matter. You just want us to think that um, you're still alpha male. You're turning into a beta. You better be careful. <laughs> oh, beta? <laughs> you better I be careful. Think- I don't think I'm that beta. I'm in love. I love this woman. I'm going to marry her. I know. There you go. This, this is a takeover, but uh, prenup no matter what. Yeah, you'll get it. I'm just getting with you. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I can't come to the wedding, but I can definitely do the interview. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah. You'll be in the interview Snuggles no matter what says, happens, though. Snuggle says, what does this woman add to your life that you cannot do yourself naturally? Mm. Well, the things I'm wanting to say on YouTube, I can't. So I think no, I'm you can't. Know that. Right. Mm-hmm. So um, besides that, yeah, exactly. So um, I think it comes down to like companionship. I can't see doing major things without her. I can't see oh. just going by myself without having her on my mind. She is my everything. So I'm just so used to her. All we got to do, all basically what we're doing is just getting the government involved. That's how I see it. It's like we're just getting government involved and just protecting our assets. But she was already the one when I saw her. Oh, that's perfect. I've never heard you talk like this. Yeah. That's what I need to hear. So now Absolutely. I know you're good. I'm good, but. The angler says, why do you think she hasn't signed yet? Oh, it just hasn't been time yet. The date is not until the end of January. Yeah. Am I right about that? Oh, yeah. Exactly right. Wow. Yeah, I've been listening. I pay attention to you. Yeah, but I've when I say prenup in the chats, I mean that. Like, yeah, prenup no matter what. I don't want these guys to just go out here trying to compromise and talk and like, oh, this is a partnership. Like, no, it's not a partnership. It's a takeover. You like this woman, take her off the market. Make her sign a prenup. Somebody's talking about um, premarital relations. Yes, I admit that was a mistake. That was a mistake. But, you know, feelings, love will do that. Mm. But that's right. Yeah. Just be careful. Like yeah. Be careful. Yeah, but I'm ready. Yeah, this is tough. This is tough. Well, listen, I really appreciate you for being here and um, discussing all these things with me that I did not know. But I'm glad to know that you do have a heart. <laughs> you didn't think I have a heart, security boss? No, just prenup. That's all I was getting from you, prenup. Just well, prenup. Yeah, oh, just like prenup, then love. That's all. It's just in that order. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> but I love your chat. Okay, listen, I'm glad you got there's something going on. There's something going on with Red Pill. He don't understand. He's still saying she gets a month off the severance. And security boss unsolicited for not cooking and cleaning as much as he wants. Listen, she's That's been putting idea. in the work. Where she ain't been cooking and cleaning, she's been doing some other things. All right? True. I'm gonna talk about it. Adult entertainment, yes. See, see, so she still gets the 90 days, right? And already he already said he loved her. So. 60 days, but yeah. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Mike B said, if I'm paying all the bills, she cooking and cleaning. All right, yes. Mike B. Facts. Yes. Facts. That's how supposed to be. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. You know what? I need to let y'all talk to my husband. And see what he says. <laughs> he'll probably agree with some of the things. You think so? Agree. Yeah. If he's old school, he'd probably agree with some of the things. Especially if he's you look at these, so. women, yeah, these women that's out here. It's like, yeah, we got to set some boundaries. We got to set some rules. <laughs> you got to put down your foot. Yeah. We can't just accept all this partnership. Oh, I want half and all this. Buy me this. Buy me that. No. No. We got to start off with the mm. Wow. Let me see. Oh, no. My husband, what would he say? He probably would say, I agree. You're right. He's a keeper. I yeah. like him already. You're right. Uh, Mike Mike said he wants to keep his heart. 
Yes, I do. Listen, I do. Um, he would say, let me tell you something. As you grow together and get more into the relationship, that stuff becomes um, not as important. You get somebody else to come and clean your house. You eat whenever you want to. Um, especially if you don't had kids and they done come and gone. That stuff is not important anymore. Mm. You know, because it has to be done. But you don't sweat each other about who's doing it. Your plans are different. You enjoying each other in life at that point. So, right, right. but for a time, she should have her part in the things that she do. I love managing my house as far as cleaning and stuff like that. I don't cook anymore though. Um, because no, I prefer, listen, I make sure we have food, but as far as me cooking, okay, okay. No, I may do breakfast, but far as cooking meals and my husband and I, we, we're going, you know, we're doing things. So it's not like that. We don't spend our time, you know, at home and stuff like that. We're going, we're moving, okay, we're running okay. businesses and stuff like that. So it's not, it's different, it it different is. you know? So, um, you said she has been putting in the work, the fact that he boils everything down to adult entertainment is where most men make the mistake and you all don't even see the wrong he is doing right now. Oh, we absolutely do. We definitely see the wrong, but he's an adult man and this is his life. And he is getting ready to correct this problem in about 20 days. Right. 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 So that's we're not, hoping not every, that the problem Huh? It's not everything adult entertainment. It's just, you know, that's just a good part. That's all. I mean, it shouldn't be man. any. She shouldn't even be living in your house. You're right. <laughs> you you made a mistake right. and you mm -hmm. may have to pay for that mistake. I hope not. I hope you just make her an honest woman and you all go on happily. Yes. It's definitely a big problem, but Mr. Rucker is going to have to deal with this problem. He already knows what he's done incorrectly, Snuggles. Yeah. So, there's well, no need for me to beat him upside the head. <laughs> I can make my point otherwise. Right. right Mr. Rucker? Yes, ma'am. You're absolutely right. 90 days of severance. 60 days. <laughs> Forget it. 60. Forget it. But, um, Snuggles, we, de we definitely agree with you. What do you have here? But, but then when everything goes wrong and you realize the physical is not there anymore, I would like to see in five years after you get bored in that area, what happens. Let me tell you something, Snuggles. You don't get married to stay happy every day of your life or to find constant pleasure in your mate. Your covenant, your commitment, and your promise is, should be made to someone other than that spouse. There's a foundation that goes into being married and it goes beyond the physical because anything could happen. You wouldn't hear earlier on when I spoke about um, the blind man, and his wife, their life. He was blind and went blind before they actually got married. He told her not to marry him. She said, he, she said, yes, I'm going to marry you. Those are the trials that come with being married. You be intentional in your marriage. You take your marriage seriously and it doesn't, it's no longer be out about the physical because there's gonna come a times when the physical may not even work anymore what do you do you leave no the marriages are worth much more than that it's becoming one with that individual wherever that person is broken you need to be able to fill that spot so right. it's no longer about a physical thing five years later anything can happen right. to her or to him he's got to love her she has to submit to him it's got to be one so those characteristics that you're mentioning in a real relationship, an intentional relationship, it's more to it than that. So Mr. Awesome says, hold on, I lost it. What he needed to do was put a security deposit on <laughs> until they sort out this marriage deal. Security deposit. So whatever works, you know, <laughs> he's doing it. Mr. Bennett, I forgot to say hello to you, but I've been seeing you in the chat. Covenant versus contracts. You know what? A covenant is a promise. A contract is agreement. I'm on covenant and commitment to my spouse. But the covenant is with the higher being, the promise that I made. So when you saying these, well, I got a good question for you. Are you going to write your own vows? 
Yeah, I actually am um, slowly creating my vows. Some of it's going to be funny. Some of it's going to be like very serious and very heartfelt. So and oh, it's all going to be true, too. I'm going I'm to just like, hey, that's how it's going to be. That's how it's going to be. It's going to be very exclusive oh. and everything. So it should be pretty interesting. Wow. That is going to be interesting. I would think that you wouldn't write your own vows, but, you know, I oh, see. No. I'm very outspoken, so I'll write my own vows okay. on this one. Okay. So listen, um, Snuggle says, but the blind guy and his wife, he never married her because of the physical. She was more important to him because of everything else. And she has proved the year after year. That's my point. Let me read that again. He never married her because of the physical. She was more important. Exactly. No, that was that was just an example how things can happen that are out of your control, whether it's prior to being married or after being married. Um, anything can happen, ebbs and flows, highs and lows. In a marriage, those are things that you go through. Not everything is perfect. Thank Facts. you. Facts. Yeah, so that's what I was saying, um, Snuggles. What did you, I thought I had another comment from you. Let me read it and see. But um, is uh okay. Snuggle says I would like to know if this young lady is asking this much questions about him as he is asking about her when it comes to future. I wonder. Uh yes, she um asked me a question. I asked her like three questions. So um, people. Like it when I ask questions about like when it comes down to where we're gonna be the finances and you know how's it gonna be after we work like what do we do just for fun so I like asking those questions she doesn't ask as many questions right then and there but later on it could just be I can just be going to sleep and boom like a couple of questions so kind of throws me off sometimes but yeah she does ask those questions but it may not be at the same time oh, okay. But that's not usually, you know, they say, um, I heard, I learned just last week, women should be speaking 70% of the time and men should just be listening. Seven, I thought that's seven, what I heard. In a relationship, like, you know, when you're getting to know somebody, like if you're going on a date or something, I, think that, I may be wrong with that, but I think I'm right. I think on the first men date, that's should be that's sitting true. back getting a woman tall, you know, yeah. so you can figure out who she is. And then you wouldn't be so non-trusting. Instead of you asking questions, you should be sitting back listening what she who she is and what she does. Oh, everybody's gonna use like good words and everything. They're gonna put the best face for it. Like I'm gonna, I'm just recording it and then I'm gonna just watch and observe your environment. Like I just wanna sit. Take me where you where you work. Just let me just sit with your friends. Let me just sit. I'm not gonna say nothing. I'm just recording everything and seeing if you're just putting on a show on that first date or are you really you were real with what you said. So I'm just recording everything in my mind. Oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I do let her talk. And like in the first couple of dates, like, okay, hmm, really? You don't say. I'm just recording. Uh, and throwing it back if I need sir? to. I How am 30. I'm 36. Okay. Good, good. Yeah, All right. That time. Well, listen, <laughs> I've been here two hours and 30 minutes. And I definitely appreciate you coming up and speaking with me because you always just flying through. Yes. I always put in the prenup. I love this channel. I love supporting you. You do a great Thank show. You. Yes. Thank you so much. You keep listening. Yes, ma'am. Like every time you put on the show, be like, ah, prenup. Oh, why are we talking about prenups? Like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah, I'm you serious be about careful, it. Because by the time, time it comes to sign that prenup, you might tear it up yourself. You keep listening to me. That's all. <laughs> I'm, fingers crossed. <laughs> I'm counting down the days. It's like, bam, here it is. You'd be like, that's security balls. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah. Just, I, I appreciate so anymore. much. I Listen, appreciate um, I thank all of you in the chat for being here. Y'all have made this a wonderful night for me. And continue to watch. Give me the thumbs up if you haven't. Definitely subscribe to this channel. And again, I will be back with some more of this craziness in my head. And I thank you all for being here with me. Have a good night. But I am to the core. You want the whole damn thing. Then you ask him for more. You want that old jive swing. You take up all of the floor. I'm fine with standing at the edge of the door. You be the life of the party. I blend in with the core. You drink it all to Bacardi. Tell the
Let's take it back for this started. You want the love, I don't got it. You screaming, stay. Baby, please don't go. Don't think it's in me to listen to foe. It's so different, we distance, we roam in the zones where nothing get hurt anymore. I just wish I was home when I step through front door. But instead, I'm alone and completely unsure. And even though you're screaming out with the best of intentions, I don't get it. Why do you always gotta ask me to stay? Why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. Say, why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. See, I've been lost in my thoughts, and my thoughts ain't too scared to usher off. Sorry, Mom, I just thought you were my world. Now you're not. And I'm just sitting, smoking, sloping in the days Cause my days ain't been the same since I drove here I remember the way you wrote letters in blue ink You and me was in love Think about what your crew think I know your moms probably think I'm a bastard Your pops probably wanna beat my to death and take up in my casket But I got sick of fighting, bickering, fussing Over nothing, cussing Instead of and watching the death of discussions that we once had, days that we once spent in the backseat of our cars with the poets at sunset. It's funny how love can pull out the foreground, but hate can take it back.